YouTube. I didn't think I was going to be able to stream tonight. Uh, I had some family stuff going on. Uh, we got that taken care of. I kind of got to clean this place up just a little bit. Um, but uh, I need to knock out that contest real quick. Um, let me get my chat to pop up in just a second. I wish I had a better way to view the chat than go through uh, this third party uh, BS or where I have to actually watch my no, YouTube. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. If not, I'm sorry. Let's open this chat up. And then I'm going to share this thing up on the Facebooks. Um, Alright, got that going. Get on my Facebook page here. I'll just share it using my phone. That way it doesn't slow my computer down. But um, Here's what we got to do. Uh, first thing off. We've got to do a, draw, a drawing. So, what's up, Brian Lee? Uh, what's up, Jason Batten, guys? I uh, apologize. You know, I put on the committee. I wasn't going to stream, uh, but we're going to we're going to knock it out tonight, man. I don't know how long I'm going to go. Actually, I could probably go for a long time because I need to stay up late, uh, so I can be on that midnight uh, stuff. So, what's up, Tom Mix? Seen you over there on the Bass Talk Live chat the other day. Uh, it's first or first time I've actually joined that deal. Well, let's get a winner real quick uh, for the black dog bait stuff. I wanted to trim my beer too, man. It's looking janky. It's like going at one corner. So, oh, uh, let's see here. Let's uh, let's pull this up. The random comment picker. Um, here's the URL for for the giveaway. I already plugged it in. So let's get the YouTube comments. I did not enter the right URL. Great. Let's see if this will work now. Oh, son of a bitch. I did not enter the right URL. All right. I don't want to do that. So. <sighs> Let's try a different way here. I got. I, I don't understand this. The reason it, it does this, but okay. Uh, let's see if I can figure this thing out. That's why I do these drawings live. That way, no one you know thinks there's any kind of hanky panky or or any of that stuff. But it doesn't ever seem to work out that way. Screen capture. All right, here we go. Let's see if this will work. If you know, work on this right here, see if y'all see it here in the bottom. Get the YouTube comments. This video does not have comments disabled. I promise you, YouTube. Dang. This is what happens when uh, this is what happens when you let technology get the best of you. Now I can't even get all my videos to show up. So I got I've got to find this video URL, which no comments are not disabled on. Let's get all the comments here. 100 comments exactly. Uh, see if y'all can see that. Can y'all still see the video? Yeah, hat's awesome. Pick a number, one to 100. Uh, yeah. So let's see here if uh, this works. 135 unique commenters. All right. I'll blow this thing up a little bit bigger here and let's get us a wiener mm. 
drummer Troy G. Any top water is his favorite. Ooh. I'm going to let it slide this time. But to be honest, when I ask for your favorite top water or any bait, I really want you to name a bait, putting any of them. It's kind of in the gray area, but I'm going to let it slide. So here, that's our winner. Um, but you know what? We're going to give away some more swim baits tonight. Uh, actually, a bunch. So when I give away the question I want you guys to answer, I want you to answer the question. Don't be very vague. But uh, Drummer Tor G has been on the channel for a long time. I'm going to let it slide. I would do the same thing for anybody. But uh, let's be specific. So, because I don't want to answer questions. I know someone's going to say he didn't answer what his favorite top water is. So, I don't want to get into that. So. But congratulations, Troy. You have won some black dog baits. Somehow get a hold of me. And uh, I will get you uh, your prize package. Here's my email. I'll see you in the chat. Yeah, I, 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 it, it has not. Here's the deal, man. I just want to, uh, you know, I want it to be fair. And I see how these contests go on Facebook and all that stuff. And I'm not trying to pick at Troy or anything like that. Great guy, obviously. Uh, shoot me your address with that email, Troy. But. You know, there's always going to be that guy that's like, you know what? He didn't really say he picked the top order. He just said anything. And I don't want to get into internet arguments and stuff like that. So. So, since he's in the chat, Troy, give me your favorite top order right now. You got to be specific. Just the people want to know. Man, that high C is good. But look, I have got, I don't know what's in here. I've got this from a subscriber, a viewer. Dude, you better keep him Jack or I will be frogs. You don't make them anymore. So I'm not going to post his address. I really don't give a shit if you see mine. Uh, but he gave me this huge box and. Hmm. It sounds uh, for g -Lay. In the words of Ace Ventura, sounds broken, but it must have been nice. I don't think it's broken though. So let's see what he sent me, because I really have no clue. I mean, it's heavy. Oh man! Bateman Junior will break it if he comes in here. He probably will, even though he's in a lot of trouble. All right, here we go. We have a note here. Big man, it should no longer matter what soft drink company is sponsoring your online beverages. You can't mention that you're drinking Soda X, and they will never know what is really in your glass. I really appreciate the effort you go through to keep us entertained and informed during Bateman Live. Your Raw and every other presentation are always well done and very enjoyable to watch. It is amazing how many times during the stay-at-home stuff that I have been surprised with how with one of your live chats. Now, a thousand plus people in the house has been reached. The word is spreading. I do think people appreciate your genuine enthusiasm for fishing, baits, and the typical things. You also weave in family personal stories and insights into your future guests. It's a lot of fun to watch the comments when Bait Jr. steps in the room. We know that there are many, many grizzled old geezers that appreciate your willingness to share the stage with your son. And we all wish that we had it to do all over again. In closing, I just want you to know that we do appreciate the time that you share with your followers. My brother and I talked back and forth during and after your shows. We started out when you were casting from the store. Many baits, reels, and rods have been purchased with advice, direction from the bait man. Oh, and the baits includes our old original Bagley's. Wow. That may have hit the water once or twice between all of them. I always bought doubles, but the pike in Minnesota are hard on baits without steel. So passing them on to someone is more fun than keep them hidden away. 
Lastly, the white tumbler fell out of the cradle before it was burned all the way through. So I'll make a perfect model when our Wally world gets more. And may you and your, yours be healthy and happy. All the best. Sincerely, Scott Stuckey. Dude, wrote me that freaking awesome letter. Uh, I appreciate that. So let's let's see what's in here. Uh oh. Look at this. I don't know if y'all can see this. A tumbler with Bait Jr. on here. Hey, Bait Man Jr., come up in here, boy. Dude, this guy made you. Welcome. Yeah, watch out. You can't just come running up in here like a thunderstorm, okay? He made you your own cup with a frog on it. It says Bait Man Jr. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. And then we got. Uh, Oh, it's, it's another cup. Oh my goodness. It says the Bait Man and Jenks logo on there. Holy smokes. You know what? I tell you what, it's got something in it here. These are some old Bagley's. And I don't have any. Dude, check this out. I think this is a... I'm pretty sure this is a Bagley. Is it a long cast? It's got the, the weight in the lip, maybe? The baby bass pattern. That's awesome, man. It's got, I believe that's a brass in it. And then... And there's some in mine, too. I don't think this is a DB3. I could be wrong. It could be a long cast, but it doesn't have the weight in the lip. But that's... I like it. I like it. I'm going to hang that up here. Those are OGs, man. I like the OGs. I love the wood bait. There's something in mine. There's something in yours? What's, Bateman Jr. got something in his, too? Maybe it's toilet paper so he can wipe your butt some more. Oh! Look what Bateman Jr. got in his. Bateman Jr. got him another scum frog. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right, go put your glass up. We're gonna need that. Now, now, what we got here? We got another. We got another glass. I got a second bait man, an OG black one. Uh, Caleb, it, I get uh, fan mail uh, every now and then, not all the time. So, I don't have a PO box that I put on here, but I'm fixing to get one. But we are gonna have another giveaway. Oh my goodness, more Bagley's, more Bagley's. Check this guy out. Now we're talking, now we're talking. I am gonna start me in a crankbait shelf like Eric. Looky here, looky here. Look at this Bagley right here, baby. I think this is the Bagley, the the E the E1, the small one. I could be wrong. That's the small Bagley. Oh man, it's got the hardware on it too. That has a brass line tie on it. Holy cow. Oh, uh, that's a pretty high dollar bait, just to be honest with you. Wow. We'll get get to hanging these. I'm gonna have to hang mine high because I don't want Bait Junior uh, to get to it. And then an old school, I believe that's a Bagley Killer B, a bone one, man. I bet that's nasty in the fall. You can still get Bagley uh, baits. You just can't get them made like this. Um, pre 1985, they get pretty pretty hard to get. So it's Scott Scott Stuckey. Dude, you didn't have to do all that. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put good use to this cup, and I'm just going to pour my high C in there so it keeps cold throughout the street. Uh, go take that to the kitchen. Hey, take this one, too. Dude, that's awesome. The only thing I didn't get was a bunch of vodka to put in there, or I'd just been lit tonight. Dude, I love those old balsa wood baits, man. I'm really excited about that. So, anyway, 
Uh, I don't really have a topic for tonight, but... That's okay. We don't have to have topics around here. Um, yeah, uh, actually, this is Bateman Jr.'s hat. He picked it out on a Six Cents website. And uh, long story short, my bald ass had to cover cover something. So I was like, well, I'll just pick up this Bateman Jr.'s hat. Now he's wearing my hat. So I go get our baits from the we got at the store. And they're in the car somewhere. So let's see. What's up, Delta Maverick Fat Bass? Oh, check this out. Come here. No. Come here. No. Hey, just, just say hi. My wife just brought me some jalapeno poppers with bacon on them. And she's looking good tonight, by the way, but she don't want to get on the stream. But anyway, this smells so good. Oh, bait junior, bait man girl, bait girl, you want to be, you know, say hi? You want to be on bait show? Say hi. Look, these rods have got to be moved. Y'all are going to break them, I'm telling you. It's too small in here for both of you. Come on, come on, Neely. Here, Neely. Come here, Neely. All right, she's going to go in there with her mama. Ain't no big deal. It's six cents in any big box store. Yes, they are in Academy. Uh, you can find them in Shields, regardless of what that moron Luckers TV says. They sell quite a bit of six cents in there. Um, but, dude, these are awesome. Oh, shit. These are bad. They're too hot. I know. Oh. They just came out of the oven. Okay, sorry guys. I'm not going to eat on the stream. I'm not going to eat. Holy smokes, my mouth is on fire. All right. So, Michael, um, I know Casey's planning on doing a Kentucky Lake one uh, and a couple other stuff. So, dude, I've got to get high. Say, what's up, St. Chris? Good deal, Tim. They said they had so many orders of babes, they could not. They, they, they made a giant batch, and they said, we expect them to sell, but over like two weeks. And they sold like instantly. Uh, Six Cents is not made in the United States. They are looking to move their soft plastic production to the United States within the next year or so, which is awesome. Uh, but their hard baits are made overseas. I mean, you know, I'm not going to hate. It is what it is. Um, you've got to be able to make a living and you've got to turn some profit, especially early on as a business. If you can do that, you can always move your manufacturing over here. Um, I don't think the hard baits will ever be made in the United States. And I'll say that for 95% of all uh, crankbait manufacturers, you'll never see them made over here unless they're wood. Um, but, you're, but, you know, striking soft plastics are made here. And I think uh, in net bait, and you'll see Six Cents follow suit very soon. I know that, that discussion has already happened. No, the rods are not made in the United States. There's only about three guys that have uh, Cashin, uh, G. Loomis, and St. Croix. Is a, and used to be Kistler. I could be wrong. Those are the only rods made in the United States. I don't mean assembled in the United States. I mean the blanks are made here, the road on their own, all that stuff. So. And Six Cents is located in Austin, Texas. But uh, I'm fixing to show you some baits made in the United States because they're made in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, ALX is made in the United States. And yep, I think Pride Rods is as well. That's Billy Kistler's new deal. So, yes, I know they are. But there's a ton of rod companies that aren't. You know, my favorite rod's Dobbins. They're not made in the United States. Uh, or one of my favorite rods is Dobbins, not made in the United States. Um. I'm not sure about Lamet Glass and I, Falcon used to be, but not anymore.
and I might lose some subs and some viewers over there here, but you know, when you're on the business side of things, you understand why a lot of stuff is outsourced overseas and it sucks, man, it sucks. But you know, at least I may buy a bunch of fishing baits from overseas, but I build windows every night made in the United States. Um, that's, I'm not going to tell you all if I'd buy pillow windows or not, knowing what I see in the factory. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. You buy pillow windows, keep me in a job. But, um, you know, it, I buy a lot of JDM stuff. And I think uh, I think this whole Seavoid thing, you're going to see a lot of stuff switch, not just fishing tackle. You're going to see a lot of manufacturing move around. If it doesn't go to China, it's going to go to countries that are willing to really help out the United States and not try to, or kill us with bat soup. So, my top three rods right now. Actually, I like uh, I got I like my Daiwas um, that I own. I'll say that I own. I got a Daiwa, my old old All Star, and then I got some Douglas rods that are really nice. And my top water rods, old All Star. Dude, uh, the guys that order in the bay, man, that Table Rock is badass. Now it's not like it's closer to more like a Jaint juice, a little bit like a translucent jank juice but they got a new one probably coming out this week they're only do 25 of them and it is a straight up barney rubble chartreuse table rock with gold flake now shut that door we got bugs flying in here dude uh-oh brian crawford six inch alert the c20 was on today they're out 17 to 22 feet deep shut that door dude are you scared of a dead gum bug? Yeah. Get out of the way. That's why I want that door closed. Come here, it's dead. Now get in here. If you want to be on the bait show, then shut the door. We're fixing it on the swim baits. All right, now get out of my way. Ugh. Ooh, this dang kid. It ain't gonna hurt you. just a beetle we got beetles in the bait room I gotta kill it it's a big son of a gun he's dead he ain't flying no more bait junior you ready to get some swim baits out all right so gonna let you guys know I'm unboxing this I've already opened it. My buddies over at Ignite Swim Baits, um, they sent me a giant box of swim baits. And I have a discount code for you for their website. It is Jaint15. We'll put it down here in the chat for 15% off. Let's see what they sent. I mean, this is giant boss. First off, I'm going to show you these. This is their Ignite uh, Frenzy Head. I was talking about this uh, like two weeks ago or last week, and I did not get to show you the hooks because I couldn't find them, but uh, this is their website. It's ignitebaits.com, and they make awesome swim baits, and we're going, we got a bunch of them to show off, a bunch of sizes. What's up, Banal Fishing? So this is the Frenzy Head. So this one is um, their homemade head that they recommend, and it's a good one. And it's got a screw lock in it. It's very similar uh, to many on the market, like the True Bass, True Lock, and whatnot. Uh, but very solid hook. And it's really designed uh, for their baits and any swimming. It's got a solid head to it. Uh, but that's a one-out, six-aught which is good up to even their 7-inch swim bait. And then they make a half-ounce 6 aught, which is really good in their smaller swim baits that we're going to see. And these are the screw locks I recommend and I like to use. So, uh, but you see that screw there. Uh, I mean, I like the 6 cents uh, heads with the weed guard. I love them. Uh, the Divine screw lock heads in these, that's about all I'm going to use if I want a screw lock. So, Let's see what they sent me here, because we're going to give some stuff away. Uh, first off, a 4-inch Lavender Shad. 
So if you win this, some of these might be open, okay? Just from where I've opened them on the show. So what we're going to do for this, this is going to be a big giveaway, but I'm going to keep it, uh, I'm going to force people to uh, use YouTube, I think. Um, look at that. Lavender shad, a little purplish blue, a little chartreuse. You can trim the nose on these. Yes, you can. But this is a four inch. This is a small, almost a finesse style. That top shelf mold. Really like that, man. If you got some threadfin shad in your lake, yeah, this will work really, really good. So, but I'm going to do a giveaway different. Uh, we're going to do a big giveaway, and then I'm going to give away a second giveaway. Um, so, I'm going to do something different for YouTube. I, I'll figure it out, but uh, I want you guys to comment at the end of this video, after it uploads, your favorite swim bait of all time. Uh, I don't care if it's Kai Tech, the Babe, your favorite swim bait that's ever made. You leave that comment. And then I'll draw next Saturday for a winner. We're going to give away a lot of stuff here. I'm going to give you a pack of every Ignite uh, size. So that's the Lavender Shed. Check this out. This is good looking. So this is the 7-inch Ignite. My northern guys, y'all going to like this one. This is Sungill. Man, this sucker looks sick. We're going to put this in the, in the, in the giveaway. Oh, man. And Ignite, and you can thank Ignite Baits for the giveaway. They, they, they said, Baitman, we're going to send you a bunch of stuff. You keep some, you give it away. Oh, man, Sungill, that looks nasty right there. You could even probably put this on a, a ADOT beast hook with no weight and just wake it up by the surface. Oh, I like that. We got this clamshell packaging here. So, a little bit of backstory on Ignite Baits. About six years ago, a buddy of mine started this company, a different buddy of mine, because he got laid off from work. And so he started that, and uh, he went back to work, and he kind of got off the swim bait making. But he made such a good swim bait, a lot of people still want it. And then two of my customers uh, come to me and said, hey, we're thinking about buying Ignite Baits. What do you think? I said, man, it's got a good following. Um, if you can, can keep up with the demand and everything, I think it's a great idea. And not only have they kept up with demand, um, they've got new molds, new sizes, new colors. It's awesome. No problem, Whitewell. Uh, the 17 Baits XPS Swimmer is a good bait. Um, you won't hear me say anything negative, but it is different and there are minor differences and there is a swimming action difference and that's okay. Uh, Lane Rochester that owns that company, he's a nice guy and, uh, the, uh, he sent me some stuff one time and he makes some cool stuff and the babe was kind of in development when he sent that, you know, they were already getting the, the molds ready and they, I, I won't go into other detail, but they were getting things right, and I didn't want, ever want him to think I was trying to get somebody to copy his deal because that wasn't happening. Again, 715 baits, cool bait. He makes a line through version, which is awesome too. So, uh, Baitman Jr., what's your favorite swim bait? I, I don't have, I, I don't like swim baits anymore. Oh, he don't like swim baits anymore. Okay, what do you like now? Swim jigs. Swim jigs. Oh, so we've moved from swim baits to swim jigs. Okay. Well, we're checking out all these swim baits. All right, so what else they sent me? A 7-inch lavender shad. I wish we could clean this table up so we can move it a little bit. Yeah, we need to get it clean tomorrow. That's going to be on your chores. Tell everybody what's up. What's up? What do you think of that color? Check that one, Babe Junior. Yeah, that's a good hold right there. That's a 7-inch lavender shad. Um... You know, Scottsboro, that's, now this is a different mold. This is more of the Scottsboro style mold. Um, and they're straight up with me. Uh, you know, I throw Scottsboro, their lavender shad's different. It's more purple. Um, and this has got some purple in it. But, uh, you know, I'm a big supporter of Tim at Scottsboro Tackle. And <laughs> I'm going to support these guys as well. Uh, this mold, um, Tim at Scottsboro, he has all the CAD designs. He owns all the, the 
patents on the CAD drawings to that. Um, but, uh, you know, these guys purchased the mold from the Fringe Tackle Company. So um, that's the way it is. You know, just kind of like the guys pulling with the top shelf mold, no big deal. Uh, they Ignite offers some colors that Scottsboro doesn't, and, and that's okay. Uh, I'll buy both, you know what I mean? What's up, Kyle Norris? All right, what colors do you recommend for clear water spotted bass on Lanier? Anything that simulates a thread fin shad or a blueback herring. Kind of clear, it's translucent. Uh, Mark McDaniels, uh, what about Millikan's rods? Have you tried one or do you want to? Uh, I haven't tried one and I definitely do want to. Matter of fact, it's on my list. Salty Daisy Bait and Tackle. I'll look that up. What else we got? Oh, uh, now this is a this is a great color here. This is just a chartreuse shad. Now this is a 3.5 inch ignite. So this is for your A rigs or putting on your little eighth ounce ball heads. Look at that guy. Let's see if we can get this to show up real well. Got that clear silver top. A little yellow line through it. Oh baby, I like this, especially for finesse fishing, man. A rigs. This would be the deal. Very nice. I think we're going to put that in a giveaway. I really wish I could put one of these shad fishing rods. I'll probably do, uh, to enter on YouTube, You can't, all you got to do at the end of this video, not in the chat, but after the video uploads, comment your favorite swim bait, and then uh, I'll do whatever I need to do on Instagram and Facebook. You can enter all three ways, um, just like we've done before, because this is going to be a big giveaway. And I don't want to not include my Facebook or Instagram followers because not everyone watches YouTube. Would be a good pond swim bait. Be a good like oh, this is a new color. This is one I've never seen. Uh, they make this is called FRS. I think that stands for Foster Shad. If I remember right, this is a color that was designed on Pickwick Lake. Check this. Got like frosted white silver. It's got a little bit of green hologram to it. Oh, I like that. That's that's pretty nasty right there. Pretty nasty. That's in that 3.5 inch. Bateman Jr. is about to get banned because he keeps running in or out. That's my pet peeve as a parent. When kids can't decide if they want to go inside or outside, inside or outside. Open door here, open the door there. Um, let's see, God, West Coast guys, trout guys, stand up, here we go, dude, this sucker looks sick, and, and, listen to this, this dude's got a rattle on it, and rainbow trout, oh yeah, dude, I don't care if you've got trout or not, a bass is going to eat that bait. And you can actually see the rattle cavity in this thing. See right here, there's a little light spot where that rattle is. And, with, and you look in the back and see the rattle. And so the rattle has gone sideways. There is no hook pocket. This is a solid deal. Uh, it's really made mostly for screw lock head. You can modify it to make it line through. Oh, you can put a beast hook in here, but it's 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 pretty tough to do. The bait's not going to slide very far down on the hook. But, dude, I like this. I think we're going to have to give a guy that. Let's see what else we got in here. TVA Hitch. This is Ignite Baits. Uh, you can save 15% uh, on their website. I'm going to type it down in the chat here. They're pretty soft. Uh, use this color code jank15 for 15 percent off uh, they're pretty soft for a solid bait they're, they're soft they're not going to squash down uh, or anything but they're soft and dude i'm telling you there's a lot of people here on kentucky lake pickwick that throw these baits they got a big following I would not worry about uh, bass over five pounds. They still, little fish eat big baits. 
Um, don't think for a second the three pounder won't eat a seven inch swim bait because they will, Dave. But if you're confident in throwing those smaller ones, that's fine because big bass will eat smaller ones too. So that's TVA hitch right there. So, ooh, that looks good, really good. It's got, you know, got a boot tail on it. Very nice. Again, that's kind of, that's Scott's Burl style mold. Like that color. Uh, a lot of guys really like that AU color, and it's very similar to it. Um, man, they sent me, there's some more. We're going to put you some frenzy heads in there. This is a three-quarter with a six-odd hook. I'm, I'm going to run out of room very soon, I have a feeling. Oop, barking spider in the house. Aha. Uh -huh. Here's the five-inch frenzy in lavender shad. Five-inch. So whoever said it was throwing the five-inch swim bait, this one will get some bites right here. I love the big eyes on these things. Something tells me. Really like that. So the bass munitions, the one of them is very similar to the uh, Major League Lures Boom Shad, and that's a stock mold, great swim bait. Again, it's not like these molds are, are one of a kind. It's a top shelf mold, but they're putting their own colors on it, and I like that. Um, and they'll pour up anything you want to. You can send them a, an email. Yeah, it's like Christmas here. Oh, yeah. And here's one in that Scottsboro style mold, a five inch. Y'all know I, li I like the Scottsboro style. Uh, now Scottsboro makes a lavender shad, but it's almost a true purple with no yellow line in it. Um, it's just kind of personal preference there. Man, this thing's sick. The Guggens don't know shit about big swim baits, but they've already they've already got one that's similar to a mag draft. I'm just going to let y'all know. It's pretty much a mag draft knockoff. If they knock off the babe, I have a feeling uh, my buddy Kyle might go down to John B's house since he lives in Chicago and just freaking give him um, a Chicago White Sox ass beating if they did that. I'm not sure. Let's see what else. Oh my gosh, check this out. A big old nine incher, a big old piece of white meat here. And this is in that foster shad color. Holy smokes. Y'all saw that other big one last week. This one's big too. That's what she said. And they've got it kind of hooked in here. Check that guy out. Holy smokes. That is a big chunk of plastic now. The hammer dong. Oh, yeah. And it's got a big old rattle in it. So, you know, depending on uh, how kinky you are, if you can't get any bites on this, uh, there's probably another use for this. Uh, Self-defense. Uh, you can use it to um, get the hookers away from you or onto you. I don't know. Uh, but I know some guys that do throw this giant nine inch, um, swim bait and they catch them. You're looking for one bite and it does have a big old rattle on it. I love this color, dude. It's got that whitish green tint, a little gray line in it. I like it. So shout out to Ignite Baits. Dude, you should see this box they have sent me. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So, this is a new color. This is a, a frenzy shad. It's called Game Over. They are soft, man. They are soft. They have really good action. So, the ones in the frenzy that have the top shelf mold, they got a lot of uh, tail movement and they, they, they have some roll to them. Where these are that traditional Scots first one. Oh, this, this looks good. Look at this. Game Over. It's got like a blue green hue on top. A little nasty green line. Oh, it, it fades green to gray. Oh, I, I like this, man. Really like this. 
This is a new color they just started making. I don't know if y'all can see that in my hand. Really, really like this. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. I, I, I'm trying not to go too fast. I got time to kill. What's up, MX Bass? I'll slow down. I'll answer uh, a few questions. Uh, isn't that like the crank bait? Uh, Whoa, $50, Mickey Holler. Chad Zone Craven, I appreciate that $50 donation, bud. Uh, that is uh, very, very appreciated, man. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, best time to use a swim bait is really any time. Uh, there's a time in like late August, uh, early September, I don't throw them. Uh, or late July when there's no current. No current is not good for swim baits. Um, but right now, it's prime time to be throwing some swim baits. Uh, post spawn, these bass are moving out deep. They're going to eat up on um, these gizzard thread fin imitators. They're trying to get their bellies full. I'm going to spit this trash out. That jalapeno is kicking my ass, by the way. I'm going to quit that habit. Man, I love orange chassis. How big do bait fish get in Kentucky Lake? I've caught them bigger than that nine inch swim bait. Okay, you want to know why I like purple so much? So, um, several years ago, I've told this story before. I was dating a girl. I went into Dunn Sporting Goods in Paducah, and uh, the bass were biting a root beer rattle trap really well. And I could not find a root beer rattle trap. And I'm not going to lie, she was hot. Not as hot as my wife, but she was hot. You know, for some reason. I had the gift of gab. I was able to talk some panties off. I mean, I was able to talk some girls and they actually go on dates with me. And she said, oh, I like this one. And it was a chartreuse and purple rattle trap. I think, and I, and she said, it looks like an Easter egg. And it was like the first week of April or whatnot. So uh, she bought them for me. So I fished this tournament with the guy going to rattle trap and the water got muddy. And I said, well, I'm going to tie this color on. And he looks at it and he's like, yeah, right. And like third cast, I caught a five-pounder. Then I caught a four-pounder. And then I basically caught a limit on that chartreuse and purple rattle trap. And I went with my dad a couple weeks later and caught a really big smallmouth, probably in a four-and-a-half-pound range. And it had the trap so far down in its mouth, I had to get pliers. Like, its mouth could close, and you just seen line coming out. And so, since then, I've always been a believer in, in purple, and it carried over into uh, jigs and soft plastics, too. And uh, guys that fish Kentucky Lake know that, you know, green pumpkin purple is always good. Uh, anything that's got that lavender back, uh, those fish really like it for some reason. And, you know, they can't see like us, I don't believe, but I think it imitates something that's on the bait fish. I know these gizzards here on the north end of Kentucky Lake, they really get a lot of purple reddish hue to them. <sighs> Best not tell Miss Bateman that's a tribute color. No, nah, she knows the story. And actually, I'll be honest with you. Uh, that girl I was dating, we dated for quite a while, and she's actually one of the few that I can actually tolerate that's an ex-girlfriend. We don't ever talk, but she's cool. Um, she's a teacher. Uh, thanks, Jack McKenzie. I appreciate it, my man. Uh, my favorite fishing sunglasses is under 80 bucks. Uh, I've been using the new Waterland Company um, sunglasses that are coming out from Six Cents. Should be out any time now. Uh, I don't know the retail price. I've heard they're going to be under 100 bucks, And I don't know why. I haven't worn my Costas since I started using these things. And I like Costas, but they're expensive. Uh, but these uh, Waterlands are nice. Uh, 
to be honest with you, um, what's available, do the Strike King S11s are not bad at all. And plus, if you lose them, it doesn't break the bank. So, dude, I definitely have the Rattle Trap. It's in them box up there. Uh, I don't have the exact ones, but I've got the same color in there. And that kind of inspired the Jank Juice and me going on this Chartreuse Purple uh, craze. What's up, Zach Levy? Yo, yo. That's what I'm going to do, Robert. I'm just going to chunk this mother out. Uh, I, it's getting to where they, it doesn't even taste good. Chad Zone, absolutely. I'll, I'll give you a sub. Ice Surrenders are pretty good. I had a pair. Uh, I liked them, but they hurt the side of my head for some reason. I, I, and that's not nothing against their glasses. I bought Coasts and all, and for some reason, different frames don't feel good on my head. We're going to have to get some more high C. Uh, that's Rayburn Lake. Oops, that flips you off. Rayburn Lake in Texas. Uh, the Six Sense ones are decent, man. They have really good lenses. Um, I have seen the Z2 crank, twenty dollars. That's not bad. Matter of fact, I just bought a Mega Bass jerk bait, and I paid thirty bucks for it. Uh, I don't know if you guys were watching uh, the Smallmouth Crush, where Pangrac poured out the red and orange it's like akuna matata or whatever that color is yeah i found one drake toby i'd love to go man i've, I've got prior commitments and, and i can't do it i've got to start editing on this tv show for mark um but we will go pretty soon i promise you that nines are good so i'm not a big fan of solar bats um I know a lot of people like them. They don't fit me very well. And I'm not, you know, I'm just not a fan of them. Uh, the old ones are pretty decent, but um, just not a fan of them. That's, and that doesn't mean you don't need them. It just, they don't fit me very well. I think you can buy this hat on Six Cents website. If I get a boat, it's going to be a Phoenix more than likely or a Skeeter. Oh. Uh, but we got more swim baits to go over. I got it coming, James. I need that freaking Morning Dawn 110. I know you got a big stash of them, but... I'm about uh, three hours from Chickamauga. Game over is nice. Very nice. More swim bait heads. Now, here's the one everybody likes. I like this one. This is Kentucky Lake Special. Yeah. You know why. A little dirty water. A little stain of water. Get you some Kentucky Lake Special. Man, this, this swim bait is nasty. That, <clears throat> this is one of their most ordered colors right here, by the way. It's got that... Big purple blue hue to it. It's almost like that DuPont color where you turn it one way, it's purple, the other, it's blue. Oh man, really like the Kentucky Lake Special. That's the one I got hanging up on my wall behind me uh, in a big seven incher. Here's, a, here's another five incher in the FRS shed. Dude, I like this guy. Dude, I love, I like this right here, man. Y'all probably can't see it due to uh, the ring light or whatnot, but it has some green hue to it, man. This thing is really, really nice. What size jig hook do you rig on a six inch swim bait? A five or six aught hook. I won't go any bigger than that, even on a seven. Um, I'm in the belief that you really, really hurt the action on a swim bait if you your hook goes any farther than halfway back. I like it actually being in the first, you know, two inches of the head. I think fish eat these swim baits head first, not tail first. You are going to get some nippers on the tail, and I actually think those are smaller fish. Now, this is one I really liked and helped these guys dial in a while, a long time ago. Very natural color. And that's blue giz, man. Uh, I like this color more in the fall uh, when we're throwing those blue gizzard or blue glimmer. Uh, rattle traps and spinner baits and stuff like that. Really good in the shad spawn right now. Really like 
uh, Blue Giz, man. That's that's a nasty one, man. Really good in clear water too. Yeah, uh, for throwing these baits like this right here, um, I don't want to get you know company specific. Uh, you don't need a giant pull cue for baits like this, especially with a jig hook. Um, it's think about this: these swim baits you're going to throw a half ounce to a three quarter ounce head, maybe a one ounce. I throw a half ounce, three quarter ounce football jig on like a Dobbins seven thirty five or um, stuff like that, uh, seven sixty five. Those are great. Um, I like. I, but I want my rod to have some tips so I can load up and cast it. Um, and that I don't want a pull cue um, because you got an exposed hook there. You don't have to like double set the hook or nothing like that. Um, but it's kind of like a crankbait. You want them to bite that swim bait, and not fill you. You want to fill them. So I like um, you know I throw bass tricks quite a bit on like a, a seven foot three, you know, medium heavy rod. Or you can go up to a 7.6, even 7.11 medium heavy. You don't need to have like a double extra heavy or nothing like that. Now, when you once you get up to throwing like ounce and a half, two ounce, you need to get up to a 7.95 Dobbins or equivalent rod. So I have used the Trash Master. Uh, it's all right. If you're talking about the uh, that the game changer screw lock catch code jig. What's up, Ben? Uh, fluorocarbon, Andrew. I use 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon pretty much exclusively. Uh, Sunline Assassin. And I like to slow roll all these swim baits. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of these I like to keep in contact with the bottom. Six to one reel. Um, you know, I'll tell you what, you need to go listen to the interview um, with uh, Byron Velvet on Bass Zone. Um, he has some really good swim bait information, especially landing fish that have eaten a swim bait. He, you ever watch Byron? When those fish get about ten foot from the boat, he drops his rod and starts hand lining them in. There's a lot of companies that make a similar molded bait to these. So. Fluoro is not the same diameter as mono, um, which it could be depending on what size and whatnot. But like twenty pound fluoro or twenty pound mono are usually not the same diameter. Bateman's best top water. Uh, man, I've caught my favorite is probably a gunfish or Sammy 100. I've caught so many fish on those baits. Uh, a bone sipper spook and then a bone Rico. I love a G splash too. Um, Vixen's way up there. This is a cool little bait here called the Gentry Special in the three and a half. It looks like a little. If you remember the color from the Babe South Sider, doesn't that look like a little minnow right there? Oh, man, on an A-Rig. Look at that blue Vayner line in there. Ooh, I like that. I really don't have a problem with that Trash Master Jig 8-8 eight, eight fishing because, uh, you know, uh, that's kind of original design. I don't understand why they in partnered in with the Goobers and... Didn't come up with original stuff. I know they can do it. Uh, you know what I mean? So I was going to pick up a Daiwa Nico Macho. It does look very interesting. Short, stubby, and fat. Um, tell me you've heard that before. Five inch game over. Man, that game over color is pretty nasty. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. Yeah, oh, I like this, man. Really, really like that. How often do I go fishing? Shit, I might as well retire as often as I go now. Um, two kids and full-time job. I haven't been able to go much. And, you know, i got stuff I do on the side. You know, film some TV shows. But um, I'll be going a lot more. Now that summer's here, uh, we had a really shitty spring. It rained all the time, man. All the time. So, Man, I like that game over color. 
All right, we're almost getting to the bottom of this thing. I'm trying not going to show any duplicates. There's the 3.5 lavender shad. We've all seen that color. Now there's the table rock, which the table rock, you can tell, it's got more of a vein, yellow vein, white belly uh, than the Kentucky Lake Special. There's some more of the five inch foster shads, man. I don't know if, can y'all see that vein in there through the package, man? This thing is sick. I love, I like that color. Well, Clayton, we're uh, we're showing off these swim baits that Ignite Baits sent me, and we're gonna do a giveaway uh, here on YouTube and all that stuff. Um, I gotta answer a text real quick. I will show you the black three inch swim bait in just a second. I got, I got to do something, guys. Bear with me real quick. I got a little important thing here. Oh, I hate it when you go to use a phone and it, it frees up. Yeah, you can, add, you can friend me, uh, but... You can just follow my page on um, Facebook. I don't, no offense. Sorry about this. Just a second. Um, anyway, follow my page there on. Um, uh, um, Facebook, um, Kevin the Bateman Baxter. I don't really accept a lot of friend requests. To be honest with y'all, I'm full uh, on my personal page, but um, I kind of keep that to people I just know. Matter of fact, I need to delete a bunch of people. Bateman G Limit Sales Guy, me, or do I know one? Because I know a few of them. Um, Caleb wants to see that black one again. Um, where is that sucker? This is called Gentry Special. I would love to see this um, in a four or five inch. That's very similar to that South Sider Bay. Man, I like this guy, man. Yeah, you can send me pics through Facebook and Instagram anytime. Anytime. Uh, let's see. Fixing had to chew some ice. Yeah, that kayak nation group is something else. Uh, yes, uh, high tech outdoors. They will take care of you. Um, you go you call. Um, look them up on fa Facebook. I'm typing it down here. High tech outdoors. You want to ask for Matt Quinn. Uh, or Tony, tell them Bateman sent you. They'll take care of you and they will ship to you. Detecting 207. First off, prayers for you uh, and your family, man. Uh, I've almost, I have almost lost my father about 11 years ago. I can't imagine what you're going through. And if me talking about baits and acting silly on here has helped you out, then I feel like I've done a good job uh, as a YouTuber, man, because uh, uh, I'm just here for your entertainment and, and talk baits and help you guys catch fish. I'm really sorry to hear that, but um, that means a lot to me, man. I, you know, Scott sends me this giant letter here and all that stuff. Um, that means uh, more than anything to me. So, uh, the Ignite guy's name is. Um, his name's Scott, and then the other guy's name's Donnie. 
their partners they're great guys man I've known those guys for a long long time uh let's see what else we got in here um dude the game over in the six inch let's see how good this sticker looks oh man yo darius my kentucky lake homie I promise you they eat that sucker when that water clears up a little bit. That's kind of like a green gizzard, man. Holy smokes. And, you know, not taking nothing away from Scottsboro. Obviously, I'm going to throw both. Uh, but I like these uh, different colors uh, they're putting out, man. Really, really like that. Oh, game over. It will be game over when you catch a couple old janks on that. What's up, Ron Depot? I appreciate it, man. Thanks for joining in. Dude, so here's Sexy Shad. Oh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Little powder blue chartreuse. I like it. I like it. I wouldn't even go to sleep, Kendo. I would just drink some bang energy drinks and just stay up the whole time. Ooh, I like that Sexy Shad. A little, it's, that's different. I, I guarantee you they eat that sucker, too. Guarantee it. All right. Oh, this is it. Now, this is the one I like, because I'm old school. This is the 6-inch Gentry Special. Oh, my goodness. Y'all better order some of these, because that right there, all that says is, I'm getting ate by Jaint. Oh. So, Byron Velvet said, uh, it was on the Bass Talk Live, believe it or not, he, he said, I think color's important, um, but one of the best colors that everyone overlooks is just a pearl belly with a black back. He said, anytime you look down on fish in the water, uh, whether it's clear water or all that, their backs look back black yeah and he says when injured bait fish start swimming their bellies turn really white so dude i love that so i've got a lot of stuff to choose from to give a giveaway and i'm probably going to get you about six to seven packs of this stuff and some swim bait heads uh again shout out to ignite baits you can use the code jaint 15 on their website ignitebaits.com and uh, I want you guys to comment with your favorite swim bait of all time. And if you don't have a favorite, just put something down there. You know, just put Kitech. That's what most people do. Don't throw swim baits. We'll just throw Kitech. Uh, and that'll get you entered into this drawing. Um, I've got enough of these. I can probably do uh, two, two winners. You know, I can do a big prize pack and a small prize pack. Uh, I'll figure out how I'm going to do this, and then tomorrow night I've got to I've got to get a list of all the people that uh, I've got baits going everywhere. Dad, damn it! All the people that's ordered from Six Cents and all that stuff. Um, I'll do my giveaway before I go to work tomorrow. So I appreciate you guys staying patient. Um, it's my first week back to work, and it whipped me. Uh, got a lot of windows to be made uh, where I'm at. I think I can get all this stuff back in here. Somehow I did. Wow, impressive. Very, very impressive. But I got some more baits I got to show you guys too. I'll put that down there. Yeah, make sure you guys smash that like button for me. Mark Baxdale, put that in the comment section after the video. Um, does all the thing, and I put a thumbnail. So tomorrow, log back on YouTube, comment, trash fish. Oh, damn, barking spiders are just out of control, especially because I'm not wearing any pants. I'm just kidding, I am wearing pants, sort of. So the Ignite and the Scottsboro, the prices are pretty similar uh, as far as I know I think the ignites got them listed on their website I have it it's been a long time since I, I think these seven inch are like 12 or 13 dollars and then the the six inch 
and below um because there's more in a pack and they're smaller they're like well hell we'll just we'll just pull up the website instead of me trying to tell y'all pull up the website so here's the ignite baits website let me lock this so it don't move all right, it says they're currently running 10 to 12 days to fill due to the volume of orders. Well, guess what? It might be two to three weeks after the Bateman show. So this is the website. This is the guy that originally started Ignite Baits. Um, let's hit the Shop Now button and see where that takes us to. I got to get them off this GoDaddy website builder. So here's the prices. Uh, Frenzy Shad, 5 and 6 inch. Nine ninety nine. That's not bad. Oh, check this one out. That's nasty. That's dirty shad. That is dirty. I'm trying to see any of them. I didn't smoke olive. I have not seen that one. That's cool. Ignite swim bait. So this is the other style. Uh, $9.99, man, that's not bad at all. It starts at $9.99. Uh, green Giz. Oh, look at this guy. That's the one I'm talking about. So a 7-inch. It's $12.99. There's two in pack, so I was right on that. And the 5-inch. There's three in a pack. They're $10.99. So, yeah, not bad prices. Um... I want to let you know, just FYI, buy this stuff right here. Strike Force Shad Spray or the gel for your swim baits is money. Really, really good stuff right here. Really good. And guys ask me if I use scent all the time. I don't all the time, but when I do, it's Strike Force. Dude, this is the best stuff you can get. Period. I found it in Brad Knight's boat, just FYI. I have thrown Ospreys. They are great swim baits, man. I love the tournament uh, top tournament talent. Um, that's one of my favorites. The only issue I got with Ospreys, hey Bait Junior, can you? I need some more high C in there, please. Thanks. Uh, is because the lead in there, uh, they'll get old and ruin your uh, swim bait. I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick. And this one's kind of looking like shat. Um, but this is the Osprey, the top talon. Um, my tail's bent just a little bit. The only issue, too, is these sometimes they don't all run straight. But See how by this treble hook, it's gotten really white down here? This is a chemical reaction with the lead inside. And it doesn't matter if you throw them every day or throw them once a year. Or if you store them in the cold or the heat. For some reason, man, that lead does not like that plastic. Yeah, I had my own website, Caleb. It's da-baitman.com. And to be honest with you, I'm fixing to start it back up. I know I keep saying that. Yeah, here's a good one. This this is one I, I threw this quite a bit. This is only about a year and a half old bait. And that was a TW Shad Osprey. And I caught several fish on it. And then I hung it up and see how white that got. I mean, you can, you can't really peel that off either. So now I got a dang swim bait that just looks like shit, to be honest with you. Um, but that's an Osprey Tournament Talon. That's the six inch. I throw this one quite a bit uh, on drops. Um, and they freaking jack this thing up too. But um, I actually just want the whole thing to turn white at this point. I do, and then I can just spray painted or something but the lead oxidizing that's what makes it that white finish and it sucks come on bait junior jump in here I use six three to one or six eight to one uh, for my swim baits. Ninety percent of the time, I have thrown them on a seven. Uh, if I'm fishing shallow, like a bass tricks or something, 
uh, on shallow water and I'm actually visually looking at the bait because one thing I love to do is take a paddle tail and put it on a light um, Look at that, some dueling drinks there. Uh, I like to put it on a, you all right? I like to put it on a, um, a beast hook, a light beast hook, and I like to skip a paddle tail around laydowns like I do um, a spinner bait or swim jig. And I will use a seven to one uh, ratio reel for that. Hey, dude said he liked your hat. Thanks. But I'm wearing your hat. Yeah. You want to swap hats? All right, get it. Give me a noogie. No. I'll give you a noogie. <laughs> no, no. There we go. Now, Bay Junior's got the lake hat. Do you have a salt life sticker in your room? Yeah. You have a salt life sticker in your room? Yeah. We don't live anywhere close to the salt water. I think you're joking about that. <laughs> you got, you're going to have a bait life decal. But anyway, hey, where do we go today? The academy. The academy? What do we get at the academy? Baits. Ah. Uh, Mary wants to work with us. Let's see, get some baits. Uh, uh, these hats are on the Six Cents website. That is for sure. All right. Uh, those Ospreys. Uh, that I just buy those at Tackle Warehouse, and I'm gonna let you guys know. The only place you can buy Ospreys online now is Tackle Warehouse. Um, they made some kind of deal with them. So, First off, shout out to B-Lat. I bought me some Finesse TRDs. I can put the bag right here. Okay. And this color is called Meat Dog. Oh, Meat Dog. I got a lot of things I need to do, Kel. Trust me. But... Y'all can guess what old meat dog is. It's a little green pumpkin, purple, TRD. Stretch it all out there. I saw these and they were on sale. I said, man, I better grab me some meat dog TRDs. All right. Man, there's a little place where you can put your hook, but it's real hard. It's a little bitty bait. Little bitty bait. It's, it's a place where you can put your hook, but it's like hook, but the thing is like so... Yeah, I like the bait life. I didn't choose the bait life. The bait life chose me. Um, what else we got? So, Brooks, pick this one out on your own. Show them the spinner bait. This is the Hack Attack Select Spinner Bait. And I think you can only get these in academies. You want to take it out of the package? Yeah, sure. Take it out of the package. I got to throw a little baits because I can't catch them on these big baits no more. There, I got it. You sure you got it? Yep. We got to get you on your packaging, depackaging skills. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way, really, bud, mm -hmm. was to take some scissors because they're right next to you ah. and cut it open. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I've never seen this hack attack select spinner bait. Matter of fact, I don't own a lot of striking spinner baits. So, bait man, juniors is. We call this color, junior, Brooks, mm. a coleslaw. You know that stuff they put on the barbecue sandwiches for a little pig? Yeah. It's very similar. This. This one's got a very fine skirt. Big man, hold it up. But it's got white blades on it with, with silver backing. Would be great in dirty water. Uh, obviously, this is an excellent spring color, but uh, these colors right here are really good in, in, in muddy water. And I like that head, very kind of similar to that Oldham's cantaloupe head. Um, yeah, it's a little light, 3 8 It's a good looking little spinner bait. Where do you want to put that? You want to hang it up right there for a little bit? You know, it won't hang like that, bud. What? Here. Just put it right here for now. And then we'll organize them later. How about that? Yeah. All right, what else we got in that bag? Dude, uh, there's nothing wrong with throwing a Ned rig. There's nothing wrong with throwing a Ned rig. It catches big fish, too. 
And it's a Lake Cumberland killer in the spring, that coleslaw color. Oh, no, I picked this one out. This is a new color from Strike King. This is Tennessee Shad 2.0. Looky there. You see the back on that thing? And this is the KVD 2.5 Wake. Uh, I'll take this thing out of the package. Nothing wrong with throwing an Ed rig except everything is wrong. Dude, I'll, I'll, you know, Strike King is stepping their game, game up, man. Uh, dude, Tennessee Shad 2.0, nasty. This is a bait I really recommend you guys buying, by the way. I, I love the ADX. I'm getting into the weight baits. Um, this 2.5, listen to that. Huge, huge rattle. Uh, I've been testing this this fall with Mark Menendez. And we've, he's caught some big fish on this. Now, the only thing I'll say on a wake bait, especially this size, you're going to get a lot of fish come up and push the bait. They'll shark it and push it. Um, and, and they try to kill it, not eat it. And a lot of times what you can do, and this one's cool. It's already got that black dot on it, which I love that kill spot. Is you can put a feathered treble on these things, and that'll solve a lot of that. But... I love this. I, I love this color, man. I hope they make that in a 6XD. Uh, of course, they probably won't because that's what I wanted in. How did you not, like, get hooked to that thing? How did I not get hooked? I don't know how to hold it, bud. I don't mash the hooks into my hand. I'm just holding on to the bait. Oh. I love those loud rattles in there. You know what? Everyone dogs strike king hooks, and they're really not that bad. Um, I've... I mean, remember, Rapala put that sure set garbage out there. Um, so I got that right there. Uh, the 2.5 wake. What else we got? I pick out, I think. Bateman Jr. picked out a Booyah Pad Crasher. The best frog you can buy uh, pound for pound for the money. Uh, they have a good hook in them. Uh, they hold up pretty well. They don't hold water. And they're not expensive. I think this frog was 6 bucks. Uh, compared to ones I like that are like nine, twelve dollars, and you just got straight up uh, white, the black spots can't beat that. I can take it out of the package. Yeah. What's well, funny is Lucky Craft made it easy for Strike King to bump up the price, but even better is Strike King and Six Cents and all these other companies. That made that make baits that are just as good now. Forced Lucky Craft to come back out with their baits in the USA series and drop their price. KVD changes out hooks on his own bait, but I'm not KVD, and uh, I'm not wasting my time. I'm not want to have ten dollars invested in a six XD. Dude, that Booyah Pad Crasher looks good. Yeah, it looks real good actually. Uh, I want you to keep this separate from your scum frog box, okay? That looks... So the cool thing is, Brooks, I'm going to teach you something on these frogs. If you start trimming the legs, like making them shorter, it'll go back and forth easier. It'll walk easier. And then when you fish like matted grass, I'll trim them almost all the way off. That's good. Got to see, see how when I push my finger, see how that hook comes way out? That's good. That's called the bite very soft all right put that in your package there that pretty much that's it sycamore i am dang lazy oh yeah uh i can i know what kvd gets on his royalty and out of respect for kvd and strike king I, i'm not going to mention it let me just let you know though he could quit fishing tomorrow and he'll make more a year on royalties than some and the guys winning the bassmaster classic just fyi oh that's a special bait brooks this is here you can get back to holding it okay this is the 13 fishing uh scamp uh square bill a lot of guys have asked about this bait and asked me if i wanted to get one or not and uh, I did. Daddy picked it up. Uh, I found it. 
It was like 10 bucks. So there's some cool things about this bait. They didn't have a very good variety of colors. And I'm not sure if I'll really throw this one. But this is a really loud square bill. I haven't found many that's got a rattle like this right here. Uh, it only dives one to three feet, so it's a very shallow running square bill. Uh, I do like I do like that color. It's different. Uh, it's not something I'd always pick up, but it's different. Uh, if I was a Potomac River guy, you know, Maryland guy, Tidal Water River guy, East Coast, this is kind of the color I'd gravitate to. Uh, but the lip, I can't tell if it's plastic or and been painted over, or if it, it's not metal, I don't think. Uh, but it does have some EWG hooks on it. And it's super, super loud. Definitely would be good in dirty water. Airful carbon bill lip. Okay. Is it worth $10? I don't know. But I wish I could find some better colors. I might have to do a little bit more into the 13 hard baits. But hey, it, it's it's you notice it's it's fat back there. The lip isn't as wide as the bait. Uh, it's more rounded. It's not exact. It's not like a, a Crush 100 or any uh, RC 1.5. Kind of, it's got its own unique deal there. Um, kind of more like a rounded old Bagley style, you know. Like that. Okay. Moving on. I think this might end up being a good deal. Uh, so my initial impression on the scamp is probably going to be a good bait. Will, will all 13 fishing baits be good? Uh, I don't know. Um, gonna have to throw it. Play with it in the pool. Test it out. Gotta test it out. Make sure you guys smash that like button uh, for me. Uh, we're at 220 viewers. Um, I know Smallmouth Crush is streaming with Brian the Carpenter over there and uh, everything, and that's cool. Um, this bait, anyway, picked it up. I don't, you know, I hate streaming on top of people, but I'm going to let you guys know we had a magical week. Not just me, but Travis and Eric, you know, their numbers were huge in the six, seven hundred range uh, last week or whatnot. And then all of a sudden it's like, and I'm watching other people stream on YouTube. Everybody's numbers are down like 40, 50 percent. And a lot of time it's. They changed that dadgum algorithm, and I think I had it figured out there for a little bit. And I was like trending every night I would stream and, and, and stuff like that. Now I'm just, it is what it is. But make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And on that notification, uh, also hit that little bell. Uh, Dar Darian was always streaming, you know. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't think Darian Craig streaming affects um, my channel at all. Uh, most most of his audience, and I don't mean this negative, is little high schoolers and, and young college fishermen, basically the same as the Guggen Squad. Uh, my audience, I don't I cater to a whole different people. So, you just found one out. so bait G, bait girl went with us, Neely, and she picked out some Zoom Z crawls in California 420, and I was proud of her uh, because this is a hard color to get, but I love the Z crawl. Do you know what? Believe it or not, this is a great Carolina rig bait uh great on it. it's a jig trailer amazing flipping bait but i figured out you can throw this on a carolina rig and these guys eat this thing randy i actually flip a creature bait more but i catch bigger fish when i do flip a jig uh and it's kind of one of those things uh and i've had i've been in the boat with someone flipping a jig and me flipping plastic and they're getting more bites and then sometimes I'm getting more bites. Let the fish uh, take notice. I think when they want something on the fall, like the initial fall, a jig catches them. When they want to bite something, when it hits the bottom, it's usually a plastic. But jigs ca jigs for pigs, baby. That's right, hella bass. All right, put that back. But Zoom Z Crawl is an awesome bait. If you don't have any, uh, I'd, I'd let you guys know. Dude, I love the huckleberry color. It is amazing, Kevin. I wish they... They made it in a mag trick worm. I've got like two left. I can't ever find it. All right, what what you got now? I picked this one up. 
that so we just went on the Ned mine. We got a Strike King Ocho and Alabama Crawl. Sean Myers, I have tried the 80 wake. It's an awesome wake bait, man. It's it's a little bit bigger than that 2.5. It's a really, really good one. So I like the Ocho. I do like the Ocho Ned. It's probably one of my favorite Ned baits out. Very simple. Um, it's not the Z-Man plastic, but it is durable. Um, and the hot tip on these, all you got to do is glue these to your Ned heads. And unless the fish rips it in half, they last forever. But um, that Alabama crawl, man, that works everywhere. It's not just a springtime crawl. It's really good in the summer, too. Uh, uh, definitely smallmouth like this. For some reason, smallmouth always see them on these Ned baits. They like the oranges or the chartreuse stuff. They really eat those. And then, of course, as you get north in the clear water, it seems like the purples and stuff do really well. Good pick, Bait Junior. What else have we got in here? Two bait. Okay. This is Dallas. When will Z Man come out with the TRD with a piece of corn in it? I don't know, but that'd be a funny color. Oh, here's another 2.5 wake. Uh, that's that bully color, which is a play off the old RC um, bull brim. And I wanted to have a wake bait that instead of imitating, you know, a shad or something, it was imitating a different, and it had some color to it. Cause I think them old brown fish will really like that. MX Bass, I'm not on lockdown anymore, but our governor is a gosh dang idiot. So who knows? Next week he may be sending us off to concentration camps. Um, but love this right here. 6xd's just got an average it's not a super wide wobble it's pretty tight but it, that the butt end kicks out quite a bit but ooh, i like this but i want this bright color overcast days again man i love that loud rattle but i think the those smallmouth would really like uh, seeing this thing be burned in that bright color but i'm trying to up my weight bait game i don't have a lot of weight baits i've got the movement adx I've got some prototype stuff. I've got some other wake baits. Um, and I really like the ADX, man. It's, it's the deal. But I always like to have options, man. Um, but Strike King, again, now that's a, that's a play off of old Lucky Craft paint job that everybody liked. They make this color in the 4.0, the 2.0, 660s. But the only thing they had in Academy was this wake, and that's the bait I wanted. It's hard to find these KVD 2.5 weights. Oh, the last one was better, right? Dude, that tequila orange sunrise, orange flake. That's jamming. Badass color. I'm not sure what's coming. I would say you're probably going to get some plastic sycamore outdoors. <laughs> Eric was going to come on the show tonight. So Eric said he'll stream any Saturday night with me that Travis isn't streaming. And, uh... We were talking last night, and I said, if you come on, what are we going to talk about? And he said, buzz baits. And I was like, bud. And he just, LOL. All right. What do you got here? This one is really hard to find. Really hard to find. Uh-oh. Bay Junior, learn, learn a little bit from, from Dad. What do you got there? The golden. Straight up, bling, bling, gold, golden shiner. Uh, War Eagle spinner bait. So I like me some War Eagles. And I've been running low, so I decided to grab a few. Now, oh. Oh. let me help you. Yeah. You got it? Really special. Too. Really special. Yeah. Check that sucker out. That is, that's a. Guys in Florida love the Golden Shiner, but I'm gonna tell you a story, Bait Junior. Me and your dad, me and your papa were fishing in a tournament. Mm -hmm. Probably about 15 years ago on my old nitro boat, and I had a Golden War Eagle. And it's about this time of year, a lot of guys are fishing offshore. And I found a bank, I'd fished the afternoon before and the shad were spawning on it. And I was throwing a white and they were hitting the blades. The bass were hitting the blades and they weren't really just, um, choking it and i dug in the bottom of my boat and i pulled out 
a vor eagle that I'd got somewhere just like this. I made a cast and I caught a four pound smallmouth. Well, me and his grandpa, my dad, he wanted to fish the Tuesday night tournament. I said, all right. And he was throwing a series five strike king behind me. And we, I told him, I got this bank, the shatter spawn and all. We're going to hit it about 45 minutes before as daylight goes down. And he caught two keepers, two three pounders. I pulled that dude out in the first cast. I caught a 611. And didn't catch anything after that. I had a couple blow ups on a Sammy. They were small fish. And then after dark, I ended up catching two more three pounders. And we had about 17 and a half pounds, roughly. I think some of those three pounders said were, were, you know, right at two and a half. And, uh, but Papa, he was excited. And we beat Dan Moorhead and Terry Bolton that night. And, uh, yeah. So I, I have a, a fond like for that gold war eagle. And I found on really nasty overcast days when it's raining and stuff like that, those double gold blades. Yeah, you can catch them. This is really good up shallow, man. It puts up a lot of flash, and when water's even stained, it's really, really good. Oh, uh, that's a three eighths. I got this one basically for shad spawning uh, and riprap stuff like that. The only problem I don't like uh, about the war eagles is uh, they will. You get two or three good fish, they tend to break. And some guys don't like the hook. I'm not a huge fan. Um, it does stick them. I'll put a small trailer hook on there. I don't ever really put a trailer on a War Eagle because of the way the skirt's designed. What's up, Dustin Taylor? Dustin Taylor says, what's up, Bay Jr.? Hi. Hi. I wouldn't hit my dad with the roll cast. I haven't tried the dagger yet. Um, it's actually an old um, net bait called the McCraw, I believe. All of a sudden, my views are skyrocketing. It's not me. It's called Bait Jr. in the house. Everybody likes Bait Jr. Hey, go look in my truck. I got some more spinner baits. Oh, yeah. I went on a spinner bait buying craze this morning. What's up, Chris Adams? What's up, John Mango? Yeah, War Eagle, I have... What's up, Steve Hardy? Well, we got new people coming in here. Uh, let me go take a tinkle real quick. What's up, Eric Philburn? My man. Do you think Travis melted down? Oh no. I hope Eric didn't make him mad. I, I wish there was a way I could watch the stream and restream both so we could all just get tons of viewers. Walmart had this on sale in the clearance aisle for $2.99. A gosh dang War Eagle in blue pearl shad. And looky here. These come from War Eagle. These are made in the U.S. When they've got the War Eagle address on there. Yeah, these are the good ones. Blue pearl shad. Shad spawn killer right here. I, I guess I'll have to rewatch that. I, I'm not going to reach out to Eric if he joins the stream. Uh, if, if he wants to come on the stream, he can DM me on the Instagram or whatnot. Um, that's just out of respect for Travis and, and, and all that. I'm, I'm not I'm not a, a talent poacher. So, look at here. Bayman Jr. has one of my favorite shallow water river spinner baits. Or get the foot, two foot of water. The War Eagle Finesse spinner bait you know it's not really big you know this is a strike key or spot sticker mini me and the finesse is almost even more smaller than it Sorry about the color, but dylan i would say a couple weeks man that six inch frog is going to be out um waiting on stuff from china they got some samples and and stuff in they're distributing to all the the um God, I'm not going to say pro staff, but all the team members, um, Team 6, I got some coming in the mail, and they said, man, we almost didn't even have to get to the team members, so, but th this is the finesse spinner bait, and then, I wonder if I got a screaming eagle up here, I love the screaming eagle, that's one of my favorite burning spinner baits there is, I've got it in my spinner bait box somewhere, 
we're gonna we are going to do a um spinnerbait show, me and Eric. But I love this little finesse spinnerbait right here, man. Yeah, you know it what? it catches them. All right. oh. You can put it back in the box. You're okay. gonna hang it up. All right. Till we figure out where to put it. Is that the Wuhan frog? It is the Wuhan frog. It, actually, they call it the. Um, I forgot what it is. This uh, Z-Man sling blade is a pretty good spinnerbait, man. You know, Junior is. Junior's been doing pretty good. He's out of school now. What blade is this? This is the uh, War Eagle finesse spinnerbait. You can buy these at Walmart. Uh, this is kind of a Indiana-ish blade. And then a little Colorado blade. Very thin. By the way, look how thin that wire is. So you're going to get you get a lot of vibration off this spinnerbait right here. You're not going to get a lot of a thump. Uh, well, you kind of get thump, but a lot of vibration. Uh, but this top blade, you can reel this bait pretty fast. Uh, not heavy duty. Four or five bass, throw it in the bottom of your boat. Go on. It's the only bad thing about War Eagle. Yeah, man, I, I I just these stream my stream can get crazy. I do stuff like buzz my head and, and and stuff like that. But um, and I know last night I drank a, a few brewskis on here, but I'm not a big drinker, and um, I'm that's just something I'm not going to do. And if, I know Bateman Junior's coming on the stream. Uh, we're just going to drink high C together. Ain't that right? It's juice. Hey, can you talk? Can you can you get on here and talk baits for a minute? I gotta use the bathroom. Okay, it's your show, Brooks. You start showing baits. Okay. Well, I tell you what. Remember, we got this six cent stuff here. Mm -hmm. We just got in the mail. Yeah. You show them that new hat, and you show them stuff. I gotta go use the bathroom. Okay. You take this show over. You go. You better own it. Okay. Make sure you're showing them cool skirts I got, okay? Okay. I got one too. You got the um, six cents hat, golden cursive, I mean, not cursive, but curse, um, lady lady, like it. Then you got the skirts, purple. Purple and pur black, and it's six cents. Be sure you don't talk about the color. I do. Six cents. Um, I had it from. I want this called, but. We got six cents and the color orange blue and white I don't know if you can see the white but and I'm not really a big fan of the skirts so We got the six. We got the six cents. This right here, and the green color is blue. So that's you ready for me to come back? Yeah. Okay. Come on. I bet you did good. Okay. Was was Bateman Jr. killing it? Good job, Bateman Jr. Come blow it up. Give me a hug. Yeah, Neely was a little upset. All right. I don't know how much you got to tell you, but uh, that's a sweet hat, man. Uh, maybe I'll go with that one. I really like. That. I like the desert camo. He's. You really like this hat? All right. Well, you, you do some model on there, bud. You were bait. You were bashing. You're bashing six cents. What, dude? Kevin Ash just gave you twenty dollars. It means more baits next week. Thank you, Kevin, so much, man. Hey, 
Bateman Jr. is honest. If he don't like it, he's not going to like it. Um, you showed that. You showed the swim jig. So that bluegill, is this the skirt color you didn't like? Yeah. That's the one I've been catching them on, fool. No. I had to order these. Ooh, bluegill candy swim jigs. Because I've been catching them on the bluegill candy um, hybrid jig. And they're out. So I was like, well, I'm going to order the swim jigs. And if I have to, I'll take the dadgum skirts off. Hey, Bateman Jr. rocks, man. He has his moments. He's only seven. Lord knows I got my fair share of spankings, but man, that boy go candy. St. Crass, appreciate that $20. Make you holla. I hope my, butt, my buddy that started saying that doesn't watch his stream. He'll probably ask for a royalty. But I love that candy bluegill, man. Um, and and that's one thing in my swim jigs. I just don't have a lot of these bluegill colors. So whether I take the skirt off and put it on some hybrid jigs or even the football jigs, it don't matter. Uh, but love that color. So I ordered three of those. And this stuff came in last week, and I don't think I even talked about it. We're going to have to clean this place up tomorrow, dude. It looks like a freaking terrorist attack on a tackle shop in here. Uh, like, -la 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 -la. Like I want your swim jigs. Sha -la 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 -la. Anyway. Um, and then I... Did you show them the stroke across? No. No? See? Holding out on me. I didn't do that much. The Oddballers family. There's your shout out, buddy. Thanks for joining the stream, man. Smash that subscriber button uh, if you haven't Guys, make sure you th thumb it up for me. Oh, dang, son. You're going to have to start working out if you can't get them plastics out. I got it. So this is my favorite color right now uh, in the Six Sense uh, lineup, the Stroke of Crawl. And that color is called Melon Dust. And old Melon Dust... Yeah, check it out. Y'all see that? It's got that magic crawl like you. And this goes with all kinds of stuff, man. It, uh, I've been putting it on that bluegill candy. It goes with the green pumpkin style jig. I'm just a big believer in this bait right now. And, and I told you guys, I was not very impressed or high on the stroke of crawl uh, when it first came out. Before I even got any, I was like, man, I don't know. It's just kind of a twin tail grub. Dude. This thing is so versatile. Uh, jig trailer, you can swim it, wobble head. I like this as good, if not better, than the prawn. I mean, the prawn's a great bait. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm a beaver guy. You know, I love the Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver. Um, I love a D-Bomb, and I like the prawn very well, but this is just so unique. But, man, this color, dude, it's almost like a watermelon magic crawl instead of a you know the original magic crawl is like a green pumpkin with that blue hue this is like yes yeah, so that's a great question sean what's the difference between the hybrid jig and the swim jig one uh the swim jig there's a black let me widow get this the there's a black widow on the door on the other side where it's way up how do you know no. how do you know it's a black widow i don't know if it's a black widow or not but well, don't be scaring me about them spiders boy so the main difference is, number one, you got the 3D eyes on the swim jig. Two, there's no screw lock on the hybrid jig. Uh, the hybrid jig's got a more of a wedge-shaped head. Uh, it's designed for dragging and stuff. Uh, I'll throw 3 eighths in the swim jig. That's the only, only size I ever throw, 3 eighths. If you're not a beaver guy, you're not a dude. Uh, that would be a great t-shirt. If you ain't in a beaver's you ain't into fishing or something like that if you're not into beavers you're not a dude and then yeah that's a good idea st crest appreciate that 20 dollars make you holler and kevin s man you guys are so good uh to bait me and junior and me uh, i'm gonna get a p.o box you know i'm not asking for y'all guys to send me your top secret stuff but i enjoy unboxing stuff and whether it's a bait, I don't want your grandpa's vintage baits, but if you got some cool that's a local handmade stuff, 
that's the stuff I really like. Local favorites and stuff like that that nobody else sees. If you got a, a local company or whatnot, like man, send them to Bait Man. He'll talk about them. That's the guys I want to promote. Uh, I love you know I'm always going to promote the Six Sense and, and Strike King and stuff like that. But I want these less lesser known guys that make good stuff to get their stuff out there. And heck, if you just want to send me some uh, Tennessee fan hate mail, I'm cool with it. We'll, I'll unbox it. Whatever. I'll be like Portnoy, you know, on a bar stool. I, w I really should run. Uh, I need to send him a DM and say, yo, you don't know me, but you need a bass fishing bar stool, and I'm your guy, you know. I have seen the Beast Coast Hybrid Hustler, man. It's a pretty cool deal. I need to order some. Um, rumor is I'm going to get stimulated this week, and guess what's going to get stimulated? This bait room. We're going to get us uh, a new studio set up. Yes. Because this table is way too big and I can't move around. And the chair can't fit. But Melon Dust, if you get on the Six Cents website, y'all know the drill. Use my code BAITMAN anytime. But make sure you snatch a couple of this color, man. It, uh, mm -hmm. And it's kind of crazy. The first color of... Uh, here, hand me that one you took out of the package. The first color soft plastic from six cents ever used was the clout in this color and i caught them really good last summer up shallow so dude bait man on barstool would be amazing um now that i've said that i'm sure some other youtuber is going to jack my idea but uh, i'm going to get my website coming back we're going to do it this week uh i'm going to do some unique style articles and i'll be able to link all my videos and stuff i find across the web i'm going to kind of I'll be honest with you guys on the website. It takes me so much time to do articles that I'm just going to do a daily blog similar to Bass Blaster. And then I'll have links to all my social media and videos and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you can use my code, Tony. It's just bait, man. It's 10% off. Um, I don't actually have a code for six cents. That's my personal code. I just send them an email and they send me stuff. So. Um, what else we got here? We got the hat, we got the stroke across. Where is all the We got some skirts. I need these skirts. One of them I showed. You showed one of them? That one. Is this, is this the one you didn't like? No. No, I, I like this one. So did you show them this one? Yeah. This is called Bama Bugger. That is going to be a football jig killer. So uh, I ordered a bunch of my football. I'm ordering a bunch of my football jigs from All Terrain Tackle with no weed guard. I'm going to dress them up with these skirts, man. I like this Bama Bugger. Got to have that purple. Uh, this is more of like a traditional Bama Bug color. Maybe I'll guys do throw that on a jig. You know what I mean. This one's uh, Candy Crawl. Maybe really I'll like this one, man. It's see, it's got a little bit of that Magic Crawl hue in it. Really like this pretty good. Okay, um, that, maybe I can, um, you want to put a skirt on that spinnerbait? Yeah. Maybe we can put uh, like a little bit of top in it. Yeah. But check this one out. This one's the, it's called Grass Theory. So I've got your traditional light green pumpkin. I've got that purple and it's got that magic crawl hue to it. Man, this one right here. Oh, this one's going to get eaten. It's lunch. It's going to be taken. Uh, didn't have a guest with a special code. Uh, we did have the Ignite Baits on here, Dustin Taylor. You can use the code JANK15 on IgniteBaits.com for any, any orders, man. Uh, say 15% on there. I don't have anything from Saudi Custom Tackle. I, I might have to check that out. Yeah, Clay, so I used to work for Pradco and their uh, video production stuff, man. And a long story short, short um, they sent me a case. All right. A case of one knockers, square bills, all that Excalibur stuff, tons of young dingers. And I didn't know it at the time. Long story short, after we got laid off, uh, my wife was pregnant with Bateman Jr., and we lived in a little bitty old trailer that if the wind blew more than 30, I'm pretty sure it would peel like a sardine. 
and needed some money, so I sold all my stuff uh, to Ronnie at the cabin, all my Excalibur stuff for like $3 a bait. So he bought them for 10 cents cheaper. He can get them wholesale, so he could help me out, and I needed it. And uh, long story short, if I would have known the price that those baits would go to, I'd kept them all. Dude, I sold them like three dozen Raven Reds, all the good stuff. Almost 500 viewers. Smash the like button, guys. Um, that, um, so, like, in, how did you get all in the baits? Like, how did I get into baits? Because I just fish all the time. No, like, how, what's, what's the first time that you got in the well, Brooks, when I was about four, Papa taught me how to use a bait caster, which is a reel like that. And I did casting competitions. And then my dad would always take me. So, the, the, Bateman Jr. asked a good question. Uh, I'll answer it real quick. Um, now, this one's sick. Neon sunfish is like a magic crawl with a little chartreuse in it. Uh, kind of like the old Baxter's bug, a little play. So I bought those skirts, man. They got a bunch of skirts on the website. It's really hard, but there's five in a pack, and I want to think they're like $3.99 or something like that. Very good price. Uh, I like these a lot. And I so. got a skirt, too. Oh, we also got a new color clout. I got to show you, and I want to get into how I got into baits. Since we got 500 people watching, that might want the backstory. This is Melon Dawn. Oh, yeah. A little pinky stinky with some blue flake in it. Yeah. I like this right here, man. Uh, it's kind of got that morning dawn watermelon blend, that blue plum flake in it. And this is nasty. Smallmouth guys. Mm-hmm. Twitter water guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just something different for them, man. Always be experimenting. I mean, at the end of the day, you can throw a green pumpkin and black and blue or catch anything, but so many people are throwing it. Sometimes you step out of the box here. I haven't seen Eric in the house. Uh, I like Travis too, man. He, he treats me fine. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, dude, he was selling them for retail, Big Red Bass, and I get it, man. Ronnie at the cabin was a great dude. He still is a good dude probably one one of the guys i look up to the most man a great human being so all right we'll, we'll talk about how i got into bait so my dad took me fishing when i was really little like smaller bait man junior um and basically in diapers and a lot of times we would just crappie fish uh on the bank and stuff like that Well, I hate to hear that, Lunkers, man. Everybody has a bad day. I've had bad days, bad months. Uh, things happen. People make mistakes or, and things happen. I don't judge, man. This is a judge-free zone here. But anyway, so I just went with my dad all the time, and I got into it. And he would always tote me around to boat shows. We went to the Memphis Boat Show, the Jackson. We went to one in Southern Illinois all the time. And when I was six years old... I could use a bait caster. Uh, I remember what it was. It was an old uh, Shimano Bantam. And then Mark Menendez came in and gave us some loose BB1NGs. Uh, so I ha And I still have one of those that Mark gave me. Um, and, then long and then I got into the casting kids competitions. Okay. Uh, Bassmaster used to do these Bassmaster casting kids. You, you could uh, do your local one then there was a regional then a national one um and i won a bunch of local ones and i won two regional ones and then one year i almost won the regional but my dad let me know if i won um i couldn't go to the the section so there was a regional then sectional then national i couldn't go because you had to have neck neck surgery and i was really bummed and there was no reason for me to win i finished second you know, I'm not saying I would have won anyway, but I was like 10 or 11. And then afterwards, Mark Menendez calls and says, hey, and you know, Kevin, um, you, you didn't, you know, if you would have won, I would have taken you. I would have loved to have taken you and all that. And I actually had like an old school 
fishing shirt that buttons up and it said Bear Creek Boat Works and uh, some other bait company on there and whatnot. But because I went to all those boat shows when I was little, I was like Bateman Jr. I was just learning from my dad. And uh, I was a lizard dude. I loved to throw a cotton candy lizard. That's what I called a 6 8 on when I was like six years old. And I got about 10 and I started really understanding everything. Uh, got into lipless crankbaits really big and um, got learned to throw top water. Man, I, I logged a lot of miles with a pop bar and a chug bug. And I fished off the bank all the time. And one thing I want to do with you guys, I want to take y'all back to where I grew up fishing there at Moore's Resort off the marina and, and show you the stuff that I would fish and how I would bank fish. It's a video I'd really like to do. Plus, I'm going to take care of my friends over at Moore's. But once I turned about 16, uh, no, I turned 14, I worked in a tackle shop in Draftonville, Kentucky, called Fisherman's Headquarters. And after that, I, um, you know, I started meeting these pros and stuff, and they would help me out. I used my money to, um, that I was going to buy a vehicle with to buy a boat. And my dad gave me a big piece of junk Ford Explorer to pull it around with. And then I just kind of stayed working in that. Met Mike Otten at the Bassmaster Classic. He said, you're good with computers. And I never really got out of the, the, the fishing tackle industry. I always played with it. And, uh, man, uh, that, that's how it goes. Well, my, well, mine was a little bit different. I'm oh, your story was a little bit different? How far have you got on the baits, Brooks? Like, so, like, I was, I was just on the bait show, and then, like... You were just on the bait show? Yeah. And then you just started learning everything? <laughs> yeah. You're good. All right, I'll answer a few questions. What is the worst fishing pole? Uh, it starts with a G and ends with an N. It's probably the Guggen, whatever. Actually, that I've used... Um, I don't know if I've used just a really trashy one before. I used the Abu that was uh, Abu Garcia amp pole that was really bad, like bad. Like I don't, they say it was graphite, but there's no way this material was really graphite. Your pole ain't bad. It's a it's a ike rod, it's just it's a little stiff. It is hot in here. I'm not opening the door though. Yeah, it's just me. What is your thoughts on online stores putting local bait shops out of business? Um. All right, that's a good question. First off, if you're a local bait shop and you're not doing any type of online sales, social media, that's your fault and you probably deserve to go out of business. Just a heads up on that. You cannot run a business this time, day and age, without having any kind of online presence. I don't care if you're a women's boutique, a jewelry store, or a tackle shop. You, It's not hard. And if you can't do it, pay somebody. Um, because I've ran online stores and tackle shops and done, no joke, I've done a quarter to almost a half a million dollars business in a year just selling tackle, okay? It's pretty recent. And once you stop doing that Instagram, that Facebook, and all that stuff, people, it won't hurt you very, at first, but after a while, people start wanting well. They and they start seeing baits not in stock and all this stuff. They start wondering, and um, no, the local shops have no one to blame but themselves. And I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but I know for a fact, Tackle Warehouse does not buy um, Strike King any cheaper than I could buy it for. They don't buy Mega Bass any cheaper. Um, they may buy a few other brands that aren't like household names that are local uh, garage builder stuff that are like, well, if you order this, we'll cut you a heck of a break. But your big name brands, Six Cents, um, you know, Strike King, Missile Baits, Tackle Warehouse is buying at the same price that your local shops are. And when I see these local shops marking up baits to make 60, 70 percent, you know, putting six XDs at seven ninety nine, eight ninety nine. Knowing what they cost and the getting mad and complaining, well, all, everyone's always using Tackle Warehouse. You know what? You can pro, you can get you an online store and sell for the same price. It's not going to be as high as margins, but um, man, um, would you? Here's my deal. Would you rather sell a hundred crankbaits a, uh, a month, or would you rather sell a hundred a year? 
I'll I'll take selling a hundred a month that means a twelve hundred a year versus a hundred a year and make more money selling volume. Ooh. You know, Billy knows TW is shipping slow. That is true right now. They had that big thing on there with the the Covoid uh, deal. That's hopefully they're so far behind. But I've I've been told that as soon as we get our crew here. Uh, Rumor was, and I don't even know if this is true, they're going to shut down for one whole day just to get caught up and get every order packed up. So, Dix is uh, um, kind of, uh, you know, Black Dog Bait's Tackle Warehouse screws to manufacture over repeatedly. Now, I do know some guys um, in Black Dog Bait's, I think you might be one of them. A lot of guys... Try not. They don't want to go to a tackle warehouse. Um, I don't know uh, all the details, but I know there's some companies that say, no, we don't want a tackle warehouse. I know Bass Pro is pretty Walmart-ish. Like, Bass Pro dictates, we're going to buy it at this price or we're not going to carry it. And some people just don't. Dude, what are you doing? Yeah, Six Cents, man, uh, again, I've been talking to Philip over there. The designer, um, they're having some shipping issues. Um, USPS has kind of been backed up too, but dude, this whole COVID man, it's a bunch of bull bullshit. Um, I do think there's a virus, but I don't think. Um, long story short, I don't think it's warranted of what it is. I do think if if you have a chance to quarantine and stay away. Uh, do that, but I don't think you need to close down everything. You know what I mean? You can still quarantine uh, and not and, and go out in public. You know, you still go to work. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of Tackle Direct, man. Tackle Direct is Carl. They are uh, they they drop ship like seventy percent of their stuff. They don't really keep much stock. Uh, um, Swimbait City, cool website. Black Dog Baits. I think you sell your stuff on there, man. I, I looked it up there the other day. I'm not going to rag on TW, man. They're king for a reason. When all this stuff is over, um, they'll be back on schedule. Uh, but one thing that's happening, too, is TW was buying up everybody's inventory because they didn't know how long this was going to last, and uh, suppliers are running out. We've seen a lot of these companies buying baits for, you know, getting their stuff in China and stuff. And because it's coming here, uh, it's delayed, so they, they ordered a lot of stuff from a lot of companies you know, just so they didn't run out because they didn't know if they'd be able to restock. What? Hey, can you put me some more high scene there, bub? Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Um, so that, that's my theory, but what I'm getting at is so TW's been slow. So if you're a mom and pop shop that's got an online store, or thank you, Dustin Taylor, I appreciate it, man. Um, Yes, I talked about the Byron Velvet Extreme earlier, Billy Knowles. Can't get a whole lot by me, bro. Just messing with you, Billy. That's a really good stream. You guys need to go check it out. But uh, anyway, this whole last two months was your time to shine. The hookup tackle absolutely killed it with TW being behind. Um, and guess what? They're gaining new customers. Scottsboro Tackle was doing good on their, their own website. All these, you know, land big fish, others. This was the time for those to shine and get new customers that normally wouldn't sh go with them. So if you're sitting here as a mom and pop store and you're complaining about TW putting you out of business, you have your chance. Um, where can I get the wood punkers? Uh, I'll look on, I usually find them on um, Swimbait Nation on Facebook. Uh, Steve, I haven't done the drawing. I'm going to do my drawing tomorrow night. I had some family things going on, and I almost didn't stream tonight. So, um, Shadow Bass, and I have enough tackle to survive a nuclear war. I'm here. I hear you, brother. Dude, them, them, I wish my work, Billy, would go to 12 hour shift. I'd rather work four 12s and get 48 hours than work five 10s and get 50 hours. You know what I mean? And somebody asked if I like Guggen baits. The soft soft baits are okay. Uh, I'm not going to pick anything I've got 
or pick them over anything I've got though. Uh, American Legacy Fishing, man, they're good people over there. Adam, I think if he still works there, he was a good guy. Uh, Shizzard, uh, BigFishBullies.com. That's for the Shizzard. Uh, Black Dog Baits, um, I think maybe he can let you know where to get the um, wooden punkers. Email uh, Justin over there at Black Dog. Old Toad, he could probably get you taken care of. Dude, Bateman Jr., uh, he's a good kid. He's seven years old. So, Robert Linson, how about the new CP baits? Check this guy out. If y'all didn't tune in last night, 587 people watching. 587 people check out this amazing wooden flat side, East Tennessee. This is a magnum size flat side. Um, that is right here. So, um, Ignite Bait Code was Jaint15. I'll put that in the description of the video as well. But, uh, Epic Eric said he wanted this one, so I'm going to send this, uh, to Eric as well. But Craig Powers, awesome bait maker. Uh, Black Dog Bait's in here. He's an awesome bait maker, too. You guys ever seen, y'all, y'all know about the G2 Shell Cracker. Um, you can fish that dude like a square bill. Um, Kevin Bullington put out a really good video about uh, G2 Shell Cracker. I think everyone needs to watch. Uh, really good. I, that's the kind of stuff I like watching on YouTube. You know what I mean? I don't really give two craps about drinking white claws and shooting uh, submachine guns at metal signs. When will these be available? These are... Uh, Craig Powers posted these on the Wood Bait Nation on Facebook group. This first come, first serve. So, uh, these crankbait lips are really thick, man. Uh, this is made for heavy cover and grinding. What's up, Robert Menace? Well, Eric's got another one coming. He is my dude. I got to take care of him. Yeah, guns are cool. I'm not going to lie. I like to shoot guns. Um, I'm really into archery, though. That's my thing. Uh, I'm not quite. I, be, I believe I was on Joe Rogan's level at one time. I'd love to go shoot bows with Joe Rogan. Uh, did anyone see Joe Rogan talking about um, fishing? And he was talking about throwing a... Uh, he didn't know the difference between a spinnerbait and a crankbait. And he was trying to describe a spinnerbait, but he kept calling it a crank. Joe, you got to lay off the weed, bro. Or you got to go fishing more. All right, Silas, what is an overlooked bait to throw on the ledges? Thank you, Bait Junior. Neely's watching the bait show. Neely's watching the bait show. On live. It's our, we're all, it's, it's, it's what we're doing right now. Dude, the mag UV speed worm, um, you bang guns and hoes. Well... One of, one of them, both both of those can kill you, Kyle, if you're not careful. So make sure you got the safety on and keep yourself covered uh, on one of those. But Michael Tula, yeah, I, I've done a few of those, and I need to do more of those as well. So um, Huddleston would be a really good ledge bait that's underrated. They don't buy the HUD here that well. I'm going to watch the bait. I'm on... Um... I don't know why. Never figured it out. Maybe it's just me. But um, let me think here. I think the Scrounger used to be very underrated. But I think the whole Lambert and Jake Lawrence, uh, they've really exposed how powerful the, the Scrounger is. Um, I'm going to go something totally different. A Zara spook on the ledges is nasty. I don't mean gravel bars and points like Brent Anderson fishes. I mean a true ledge. Uh, when those fish get on top of a ledge, uh, you can catch them on top water in the middle of the day. A lot of guys won't. A guy from out west named Jack Gadledge, um, Black Dog Baits may know who I'm talking about. He moved out here about 15 years ago, uh, about two or three um 
years ago it was really tough and he's like dude i'm catching 20 22 pounds a day and i said bs and he said i'm catching him on a spook on a ledge i'm like what and dude he went out there clear a clear zero spook and going as fast as he can in the middle of the day and these four or five pounders were coming up and just crushing uh, yeah dude gadledge is a great guy man he won a lot of tournaments out west i've been to his house he just lives down the road from me his basement is full of like old copies of certificates for boats and all that stuff and i think he was on the very he was fishing really good he won to open i believe it was over at Mead or havazoo uh, right before he kind of called it quits he had a daughter that was special needs and she was a sweetheart and that's why they moved here. We have one of the best special education schools in the country. He moved here, and he was super nice guy. He was figuring this lake out, man. He was, but he's a good dad, man. Great family guy, good dad. And he put the rods and reels down, make sure his daughter's taken care of. Unfortunately, she passed last year. Um, and Jack's a great guy, man. I've learned a lot of fishing. You talk about dudes got some old school. Uh, swim baits and top water stuff. That's a guy I'll, I'd love to get him on here. He deserves some recognition, I believe. You, you talk about out west guys. You got, you know, Byron Velvet uh, out there out west, and um, your D Thomas, and you know Skeet from out west, and the guys that's won the U.S. Open stuff. Uh, John Murray and all that. You ask John Murray about Jack Gadlich, and he'll be like, dude. He's a freaking hammer, you know. Well, I don't think Lambert had much of a choice in that deal, Aaron. That's all I got to say. And Lambert's a great fisherman. Cliff Perch, cool dude. What happened between Jason Lambert and Randy Haynes? Well, Randy took it to the damn house. And that's pretty much what happened. I've got the waypoint. And it's a community hole out in front of Jonathan Creek down here. And there was only there was one really big school up there, and a lot of people knew about it, and they just fought over it. And it's just a fishing deal. And Randy said, Well, I ain't gonna fight nobody. I'm just gonna take it to the damn house and lay some lay some hardwood. And he did. <laughs> That's the funny thing, he did. I like Randy, so um Is the Yozuri fluoro any good? Yeah, it's not bad. Top knot's not bad. Dude, I, I'm going to get Jake uh, in here pretty soon. I'm going to have to go fishing with Jake. That's the deal. Um, I really wish our work would have just stayed slow. No offense to Pella Windows, but I'd rather make YouTube videos than Windows. <clears throat> Let's see here. Too. Uh, I've missed some questions here. Hey, Bake Man, on the Bass Shallow or Deep, where you're at? Uh, they're both. There is a few uh, schools of bass offshore, but they're not really schools. You're fishing more individuals. But there's a lot of fish up shallow too. You know, I was, Brandon Hunter was over at my house. He's like, dude, I need some C15s. I got. I want to mess with it this weekend. All I've got is 20s and 25s. So he come over and we're talking. He said he's not seen any fry up shallow. And if you're not seeing a lot of fry, either they spawned a month ago and the fry have already gone, or a lot of bass haven't spawned yet, so I think uh, we've got a lot of fish that are waiting to spawn, or probably doing it now. I've got Billy. I'm getting a new cell phone next week, so I'll have a new number. I'll message it to you on Facebook and Jake. Hallsville, Hallsville. Is that? I think that's Indiana, Tony. Is that correct? Hallsville. Well, there you go, Kendall. Send a ton of fry around Paris. Uh, so that's the difference between the north end and the south end. Our fish spawn a, a lot farther behind than the south end. Uh, hey, Bakeman, uh, I've seen that. Bakeman, do you see the new Ultra Vibe Speed Crawl Magnum? Uh, I saw it on Bass Blaster, and I'll be honest, man, I like that. I li I got a rack full of speed crawls. Uh, TK, Tackle Craft, my man. I got to get you some P70s um, paint up. How do you hook fish on a scrounger? I literally get 10 bites to one fish. If you're having trouble hooking up on a scrounger, TK, use a crankbait rod. I'm, I'm dead serious. Use like something you throw a 6XD on. 
that's not as sensitive as a graphite rod just so those fish can eat the bait and load the rod up um, use a really sharp hook too um, the best you know scrounger heads out there really is the old scrounger heads or the davis scrounger heads and uh the hog wobbler uh I, i've thrown the katana ones that lambert does they're 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 good uh i'm not going to sit here and argue with jason lambert obviously he's a better scrounger head fisherman than me but uh dude that hog wobbler is nasty but um uh, i like throwing them on a cranking rod because essentially what you're doing is is you're cranking a bait you know and it's just doing like this right here it's not much different than chatterbait it doesn't thump as hard as a chatterbait what our scrounger does is make the bait roll it doesn't really vibrate it, it sits there and rolls and uh, I like using light line man 12 pound test on a scrounger I used to use 15 17 and Jake got in to tell me dude go light go go 12 or less you get a lot more bites Oh yeah, Tell City. Uh, I know where Tell City is, man. I think there's a couple little tackle shops up that way. Um, is it is one called the Tackle Box? Maybe. I think I've been in there. It was next to a little restaurant. Um, I've got a buddy that uh, coached some football. I want to say it was, I don't know if it was Hallsville or where it was. His name is Jeremy Estes. If you know him, Tony. Um. You're right, Chris, exactly. Heavier line got more line twist. Uh, TK Buchanan's is still open as far as I know, man. Still open. Yes. Um, St. Chris, you need to call my guys right here. High Tech Outdoors. That's the place if you need a good deal on some NRXs. Uh, I think uh, Matt would ship them to you. Uh, let him know. Say, hey, I was watching Bateman. Uh, he said you got some great deals on NRXs. And I think he's got some demos. He's got some Conquest as well. Six Sense Frog. I, I, I'm sure it'll come to Academy and stuff, but I think it's going to be direct sales first. That's a good question, Stoney. What power action rod do you fish a scrounger head on? Um, I like a medium heavy uh, fast. Uh, basically, almost what you throw a crankbait rod on. 7.3 to 7.6. You don't have to go crazy um, uh, with that. How do I fish a pop art? Now, <clears throat> holy smokes. Was that during a Triton Owners Tournament? <clears throat> uh, Ralph, I'm pretty much a guy that I keep a pop bar moving quite a bit. Um, you know, Skeet Reese did a good video on the G-Splash, and when he's uh, pinpointing individual cover and stuff like that, he doesn't work it all the way back to the boat. And I, I do that quite a bit. If I start catching fish, like, on the tops of stumps or on in the laydowns, for me, there's no point to work it all the way back to the boat, but I'm pretty much, I, I usually do three pops and a pause. Sometimes it's a short pause, sometimes it's a long pause, but I always start off with a pretty fast retrieve, and if I'm not getting bites, I'll slow it down like that. What about the lure locker? You know what? Here's my deal on lure lock, and I, I talked about it last night. All right, this is my flat side crankbait box, okay? There's one, two, three, four, five. I'm looking at six little johns right here. One, two, three. There's 10 baits there. There's five crush 75s. There's all these. There's a lot of baits. There's probably 50 to 60 crankbaits in there. In a lure lock box, you can get about 20. I would have three flat side box for lure lock. Now, you can get their boxes without the gel in the bottom, but their big selling point is the gel. I'm not sure if I trust that bottom stuff with, like, some of these balsa baits that are hand-painted and all that. Now, you know, like, if 
TK paid to bait or my guy bag five. They use a really good clear coat. I don't think it's going to pull off or anything like that. But dude, I'm telling you, if some of the, some of these handmade deals I have got get jacked up, I would be really pissed off. And even that old Lucky Craft stuff that's got like the full flake on it, like the Aurora Blacks and some of those flash gill colors, I'm afraid to pull pull off. Um, let's see here. Oh, man, comments are just flying in right here. All right. How is Barkley during the summer? How is the size of the fish compared to Kentucky Lake? Actually, the, the fish size is pretty comparable. Um, my biggest fish I've caught on both lakes off, off Barkley. I caught a nine-pounder on Barkley on a beaver. Um, Barkley fish is shallower. And I'll be honest. And I'll be honest. Um... When it's the hot summer and it's tough on Kentucky, you can catch them on Barkley, especially you get back in those creeks where the springs come in. There's a lot of schools. natural springs. It's got cooler water back there. Man. Berkeley Bullet Pop. I actually don't know much about it. It looks really good, Robert. And they're $6.99. It's worth taking a flyer on. Uh, that's the way I do it. You know, if I find a bait and I'm not sure if it's cheap, I just buy it and play with it. You can tell so much about a bait by just having a swimming pool or, you know, I got a pond next to me. I can throw it out there, 10 casts, and I'm like, well, that'll, that'll, that'll work. Uh, three colors from Ignite. Uh, I would get the Blue Giz, uh, Kentucky Lake Special, and I would get that uh, um, Blue Giz, Kentucky Lake Special, and I would go with the FRS Shad, um, that Foster Shad. Man, that's a... Those definitely work. I know that Kentucky Lake Special, man, that one slays. Kentucky Outdoors, I don't have a boat. I got a Barbie boat in my bathtub, though. Um, I used to have a Skeeter ZX225. That's my goal next year. I'm going to grab me a boat. I got to get a new truck, um, get a truck, and then I'm probably going to work on getting a boat, kayak. Um, I, I just One thing, I, I had a boat, but I fished out of my partner's boat so much that while I, I was like, man, number one, I'm poor and broke. I got a kid coming. Two, why am I paying this money a month when I don't even when I want to use my boat? I'm in somebody else's, so just made more sense. So, uh, new money bag's good, Chris. It is good. So, all right, Whew, man, these comments y'all rolling on me tonight. Tackle craft. That's what I'm saying. That old matte finished Lucky Crafts, like I like that old powder blue chartreuse matte one. Dude, it would peel if it got hot in a Plano box. I, I just don't know about that sticky, sticky stuff. Now, it may be really good. I'm not bashing them. I'm just, I'm one of those guys who put me in that conspiracy theory. Uh, let's see here. Does Six Cents Popper walk pretty good? Yes, it does walk good, especially the 71. Michael, man, I appreciate you joining me. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Enter the contest tomorrow sometime. Comment your favorite swim bait. So if you're just joining us, I'm going to do a big giveaway with Ignite Swim Baits to get entered on YouTube. you got to be a subscriber. And after the video, uh, when it uploads tomorrow or late tonight, comment with your favorite swim bait. I don't care for the Storm Wild Eye Shiner. I don't care if it was a Boyd Duckett swim bait. Although, if you win, I might have to throw a BD Shad um, that I pooped on in your package. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't ever do that. But yeah, dude, Kentucky Lake Special. The sun gill is is nasty too, man. But I know that Kentucky Lake Special catches them out here. Thanks, Jason Beck. I appreciate it. We're almost to midnight. I'll probably stream to about midnight my time, and then I'm I'm gonna get out of here. So, Lim Moss, were you surprised a few years back when the high school kids smoked those big smallmouth? I was surprised that they smoked smallmouth, but I was not surprised that they caught those fish way back in there. Dude, that freaking wild eye, the color is called Bunker TK. That looked like a striped bass. I watched Kelly Jordan. If there was a major league fishing, and, and I was filming classic patterns, and Lee Livesey, he, he first conversation I ever had, he was talking about this. I, I filmed him for two hours straight on fork. And he caught a six to eight pounder every cast on a wild eye. 
It was unreal. Old Mitchell freaking bait caster and some whatever kind of rod he was using. It wasn't fancy, but you know that brings me to this point, man. You get on the swim bait nation groups and these guys are like, oh, you gotta throw a Huddleston, you gotta have a F five custom Joe Blow rod, and you've gotta have X Y Z brand fluorocarbon, and you better have a Shimano Calcutta with digital tuned gears and all this, and you re bullshit. Steve Kennedy caught 120 pounds of bass on a 711 Kistler flipping stick and a Shimano Corrado with a Huddleston. Okay? Why do I need a $500 custom rod and all this stuff if Steve Kennedy can win $100,000 throwing a HUD on that setup? And Steve Kennedy still uses green Corrados. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I'm not saying it was, it felt like a Cadillac, but it got the job done. Ocho versus Shimishik. I'm a I'm an Ocho guy. Steve Amakatsu wa uh, Wobbler. I've got the Amakatsu uh, Waddle Bait. Is that what you're talking about? Is that totally, that, that's the Waddle Bait? They now make a big one. I gotta get that big big size. No. It was just a green Bantam Corrado, the old 200s. And I think he might have had a Calcutta, too. Yep, KJ used Fenwick. That was it. No problem, Drummer Troy. Make sure you message, uh, email me your uh, mailing address. Hey, TK. TK in St. Crest, check this out. This guy that sent me this special Bateman cup. He sent me some of these. Look at these. Some some brass bagglers, man. I'm going to have to get me a special box. I believe this is a Killer B2. A bone Killer B2, man. I like that bait, man. Um, I can't believe nobody's tried an injected bait with that same kind of style. And maybe they haven't. I'm just not thinking about it. And then, I'm excited about this, guys. I'm so excited. This guy's name's Scott Stuckey. Check, check it out. Caress. Brass. Bagley. I believe that's it. Is that the B3 or is that the B1? It's the smaller one. Oh, man. This subscriber just, just kicked it out of the park, man. And then, uh, I don't think these are DB3. I don't think, uh, this might be a DB3. And then, I think this is the long cast. I could be wrong, because it's got the metal weight. Uh, see how that, it's got that metal on the lip there. But, I, I will not fish with these, man. I'm going to be honest. I, I'm not a big collector. I pretty much fish with everything I buy. Well, I believe these are going to go on. Uh, these will go to Brooks College Fund. And they're in really good shape, man. I'm going to get me like an Eric crankbait hanger thing going up here somewhere. The only reason I don't now is I got kids and we're not. Correct. I didn't know. I'm not a huge Bagley guru, TK. That's something I got to learn. So that was just one of those baits I never thrown a lot here, and so I didn't learn much about it. Uh, I th I think TK said that was a DB three, but God dang, I want a DB Dookie. Whew. My wife cooks really good, boys, but it ain't good on your stomach. Oh, I got you, David. The inches per turn don't change. Okay. Um, but uh, we got piles of baits here, so I'm going to order some baits this week. Uh, I think I want to do a little JDM stuff, uh, but... See if I got anything else new. I don't think I did. 
I get so much stuff all the time. I have a tackle problem. Good gosh. 29 Shimano's. Holy cow. I barely, I, I've got an old Chrono. That's it. But Anyway. Well, I was going to stream to about midnight. Um, I don't know if I still am or not. We'll see. I've got to get a thumbnail and some other stuff. But I like talking to you guys. Um, someone hit me up with a topic. 682 people are watching right now. You got to be kidding me. 682 people. Let's talk. Whoa, guys. Whoa. Load a question here up in the comments section. Brittany Paris, would you kiss your wife for $100 or the hottest girl in the world for $700? Well, my wife is the hottest girl in the world, and I do it for free. How about that? How about that? Flat A, yeah, let's talk about the old Flat A, Robert. You can't trap me. I'm always one step ahead. If my wife really loved me, she would come on here and give me a big old smooch on a live stream. Just to prove Bait Manning's got it going on. So, this color right here, uh, this is nasty, right? This is an old Build Ants Flat A. Um, got got that signature on. The only, only, only thing about Build Ants, I wish he put that Power T behind his logo. That way all these baits had the Power T on there. But I think this one's called Honey Shad, but it's got this brown copper back on it. Man, this is a springtime kill. I got This is my last one left. I got this hung in a stump. And I straightened the hooks out to get it back. I actually got it hung on, and then I got it hung in my tackle box, uh, Bass Mafia box. So I give you my paycheck like every week. So uh, my, yeah, I'm pretty sure if Brittany would come in here and give me a little smooch, we get to 700 likes. So, do you know where I could buy a P70? Um, Yes, uh, Mike's Tackle World has some reproduction P70s. You can get them there. Uh, I'm going to ship these, ship a bunch to TK. I'm, I'm going to send him like six this week. And I'll let TK do his thing. Y'all buy them from him. I ain't worried about making no money. I want y'all to get some cool stuff. So, um, But as far as the, the flat A's, man, this is a color I really like hard hard sucker to find and you see a lot of chartreuse powder blues and stuff like that but one thing i really liked about this bait is it was a it's got a little bit darker uh blue it's almost like a midnight blue and then it's got the school bus yellow man that that school bus old bagley yellow is just a nasty combination you know if i was gonna order some flat sides from a custom painter if you're listening tk this is something right here that I would really want. You're not going to find that even in a lot of baits manufactured today. Not a lot of guys are making a midnight blue with the, just the straight ups, you know, that faded school bus yellow. Really good dirty water color on the flat A, but these are. So you find this on eBay. That's a that's a that's a forty dollar bill. And then I use this color a lot in the fall. I had about four of them. I'm down to two. That's the problem with flat A's. I throw them, and I know I'm going to get down to one of certain color and it's gonna and that's kind of a that kind of like a translucent norman flake man that thing is nasty that's a color i'd love to see another company come out with something maybe you know casey if you're paying attention six cents that would make an awesome flat 75 color that would make a great about anything do a good trap color you know, it, that's weird, though. You know, when I'm thinking TK, is, is what I know is that blue, even navy blue, it, it's the last color that dissipates in the water color, you know? Dude, I know it catches. Uh, I, I'm, that bait catches, and um, Six Cents makes a, uh, a chartreuse in blue that's a... Uh, I forgot the exact name. It's like Blue Truce or... 
um, 65 chartreuse shad or something. It's got a, it's got that midnight blue on the back, and it catches really good. Uh, I think we're so used to that powder blue color or whatnot. I'm going to try to go uh, rate it. Chartreuse Spank, that's it. Thank you, Thomas Hines. Um, but I don't... What I got, I got some flat A's, you know. This is my deal, and, and I show them all the time. This bait right here is freaking nasty. It's the DT flat. That's that's the bait that Ott Defoe has been smashing them on. Won the classic on. He got a modified lip. Well, there's a guy named Marty Burns uh, that builds balsa baits. And what's crazy is he reached out to me, watched me and Epic Eric on here, and he said, hey, man, send me your DT flats. I'm gonna modif I'll am modify them for you. Put that computer board lip, round lip. I'm going to send him some DT flats, but it's hard. I've got a lot of the sevens. I need to get some more threes. But that DT flat's a nasty, nasty bait. Now, as far as produced flat side, dude, you don't get much better than this guy right here. The flat 75X. That and the Strike King KVD, uh, the deep flat side. That's the best to mass produce baits out. Uh, and, the, you know, you can still get a Bomber Flat A, too, just not in those old school colors. Um, and then everything else I'm going to throw flat side is pretty much going to be balsa. Uh, and you can catch them on flat side baits in the summer, you know. A lot of people aren't doing it. It's a good way to catch these shallow fish that are pressured um, or unpressured because everybody's out deep. Or everybody's dragging plastics around. They don't want to throw these balsa baits. Great river baits, man. So these new these new boxes are deal. Yes, that is very true. Okay. Uh, he caught a seven pounder first time he took out that the proto of that bait. It, it, it's the most underrated six cents bait. It's just a bullshit the Googans co copied it. But you know what? I'm one of those guys. But I don't, I'm a, I'm gonna throw the original. You know what I mean? Supposedly they're going to come out with a DT flat that's got got the round my Carter bill. It's going to be called Slim. It's supposed to come out earlier this year, but now I don't know. Better get some of those poppers. They're going to be gone. Brooks is going to eat them all. Brooks, uh, he ain't going. They're too spicy for him. I'm still waiting. The the people want bait woman on the bait show. I think she might be in her uh, nightgown, so that's probably why she ain't coming on here. But boy, we could get 1,500 viewers real quick if she'd roll up in that nightgown over here. Kyle, that's a very good point. He says, my theory is that sometimes the fact they can't see the bait as well is the reason why some colors work better than others. I agree with that, but especially in clearer water, um, because those fish can get a good look at it and tell maybe it's fake and, and a lot of times if i'm using a bright color in clear water i like to work it faster you know that way they just kind of see a flash of it and they have to react where they can get right up on it that you know i'm not worried about being in the doghouse shadow bass and i live in the doghouse oh but uh somebody if you See how many people we got up on the stream now. If we get, if we keep climbing, we're gonna keep streaming. If we start falling, I'll come down off here. Six hundred and eighty-one people. Wow. Hey, hold on just a second. I think Lunker's TV's calling. Hello. Oh, am I bashing Guggen Bates? Absolutely. See ya. Are you coming in here? No, I'm doing it though. You're supposed to. You're supposed. To, you're supposed to come in here on the stream. Say, give me one right here. Oh, really? Come on. Come on, right here. The people are waiting. <laughs> you don't want to see it. Come on. There. Oh yeah, there we go. Seven hundred beers right there, boys.
Yeah, I don't think Rob's really going to be calling me. And here's the thing, man. Damn, him are hot. Travis has low T. What, what's that mean? What's low T? Is he like... We're talking like Vitor Belfort used to be in the UFC and had to get the T replacement. I don't think they've noticed the bashing. Well, actually, I met him in ICAST the first time when he, he had about the same amount of subs as I did. And he was doing fishing content. So here, here we'll go keep it real here on the big man. And long story short, um, I talked to him. He was kind of different. And I said, hey, man, I'm running this online website. I'm not asking for you to promote it or anything. I'll send you some baits, the unboxing. Just give us a plug. He turns around. This guy's got 13,000 subs at the time. And says, yeah, I'll do it. I said, oh, cool. Um, $10,000. I said, what? He said, yeah, it's $10,000. I said, I can pay KVD for 48 hours in a tackle shop for $10,000. He said, well, I have more impressions than KVD. And I said, dude, you only got 13,000 subs. Now, now he's got one point something million. And so I was like, wow, that was kind of ballsy. And so I said some stuff on Facebook. So I go to ICAST and, you know, I, I meet Winston at Favorite Rods because at the time we were a Favorite Rods dealer and the only one within like 200 miles where I'm at. And uh, Winston was really nice. And, and believe it or not, uh, Alex Perk and John B were like super cool. You know, Perrick actually is like, hey, man, I watch your stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. I like what you do. Um, really nice kid, actually. Um, John B. was cool. He just wanted to talk some fishing. And then Rob, he starts in like, well, he's like, I don't want to talk about all this shit you start. I said, dude, you ain't got, you ain't, I'm not here to talk crap. I'm here to work. So if you got an issue, you can talk to me anytime. But I'm not going to do this in a public uh, setting. I said, number one, I wasn't talking crap. I was putting out facts. I said, I'm not bashing um, your products or anything like that, but it is what it is. I, w I wasn't there to, um, you know, I'm not going to go in a public setting in, in like place like ICAST and start something like that. Now, if you want to go start something over in the back of a Hooters parking lot, we can do that. But... Uh, Anyway, uh, I met Justin Rackley. He was cool, but um, the sec second or third time I met him, he was just like, well, he acted like he didn't know me. I didn't like that. Um, I'm, I, I don't really care about his war stories. You know what? I'll be honest. Damn. Woo. My mouth is on fire. Holy shit. There's a fishing challenge for you. Loser has to eat a rack of my wife's jalapeno poppers. We might. We would probably kill off a Guggen Squad member doing that. It is no joke. I don't mean die. I mean they would just be like, their mouth would catch on fire and they couldn't talk for a while. What's begging for cash whiskey Wednesday night? What is that? Mmm. Good question, Dustin. Top five balsa crankbait makers. Now, here's the deal. I'm getting into the balsa scene other than a few old things. So, um, I think Jimmy... Uh, Number one, Norm Coulter makes amazing stuff. Um, I'm going to go Black Label Balsa just because I'm Cliff Pace because his stuff's so mass-produced. I think his quality's really good. 
for a mass produced balsa and they're able to keep up the inventory. Um, God, spiders barking. And then, um, um, what was it? Sat in my hand. So you got, oh, Craig Powers. Absolutely. Do I think Craig makes the prettiest baits on the market? No, he doesn't, but they catch. They catch. Um, so, and Jimmy Eater, I think he's come on pretty well, but uh, Marty Burns and those guys, and then uh, I'm going to go with Wally G, man. Uh, Wally G uh, makes some amazing stuff, and he's out here of uh, Paducah, um, and, and Wally is an old-school crankbait maker. Uh, he does the sea flash stuff now. Um, his stuff's on eBay. Um, he, he he makes some great baits, man. Wally G is old school dude. Uh, I like the Gary D baits. Really, really good. Um, there's so many builders right now. What's up, Nick? Weston Smith. Yeah, that guy's... That guy wears skinny jeans bass fishing. That's all I can tell you. I'm just going to be honest. TK, I don't. Uh, he's invited me. He said he could come anytime, man. Um, back when I worked at the Fisherman's Headquarters, you might have been in that shop. It's in Draftonville on the north end. It was There's a little Y next to a grocery store. They used to sell a lot of Wally G's there. He made a great flat side. The Root and Ron was a good bait. Um, <laughs> let's be honest here. I would, wrap, I would fish a turd wrapped in tin full if it caught jinx. But I'm not going to lie, I probably would too. No, this dude's it's beyond skinny. Like, his jeans are so tight, if he fart, he'd blow his damn shoes off. Yeah, Trey Harple, he makes a good weight bait. Berkeley Fritz Side Reviews is probably one of the best crankbaits. Uh, that was put out in the last year or two. Berkeley did a really good job. Or should I say David Fritz did a really good job designing that bait. Yeah, dude, they're, they're rough. When this dude, this Weston dude, came out with this video, basically how his life was changing because he was dropping favorite rods, and he made the comment, well, I've never held a Guggen rod, but I'll, I'm going to promote and support them. Okay. I promise you, I love Dobbins, but if they put out a piece of shit, I'm not going to use it. Uh, I just don't get people, man. Just be yourself, man. Promote the stuff you like. Don't go, don't sheep it up, man. Uh, I mean, someone asked me the other day about a uh, six cents flow glider. I get this question. It's a decent bait, but there's a bunch of baits I would throw over the flow glider. Absolutely. I think the flow glider. Good concept was not their best bait, but if you, by God, you, some of them other guys can't do that. Marty Burns is man; he makes some good stuff. When are you getting some more of those in, TK? We we gotta get TK Stanley up on a stream. We can get him up in the shop, spraying some stuff down. Those uh, Bob Fish, the Frenzy Heads, are in a two-pack, bud. Dude, it's like midnight. I don't want to be ruining people's... All right, last one. Last one, I promise. Bait Man, if you had to pick one crate bait, give it to us, bud. Hmm. Probably a, a Strike King Series 5, man, to be honest with you. Strike King Series 5. You can fish a lot of different stuff with that. That or I'm going to go with a uh, uh, some kind of square bill. More than likely, you know, a 6 cents crush um, 50 in chartreuse purple. I can catch them anywhere on that. What color? Easy. Tennessee Shad.
let me know when you uh, TK when you plan on going to the shop. We'll, we'll hook up, man. People, I think people people on the channel would love to see some of your work in the shop. Uh, I know the guys that come off from Smallmouth Crush. They're for familiar with you. That was an awesome show, by the way, that you were involved in uh, when we had y'all had the triple threat four way going. But I think a lot of guys would really enjoy seeing some of the stuff you got, uh, the bait you're painting for people, what people like to send you and stuff like that, and, and show some of those colors, man. I'm going to let you guys know, if you didn't get to go to the Bassmaster Classic, yep, cream cheese. That one, my wife took the seeds out or something because it was fine. It wasn't hot. Um, do TK painted up these bull shads. And I'm going to see if I can find them on my computer real quick. I might still have this stuff. I might still have this stuff. I'll have to look here. Let me see if I can find some of this stuff. I'm going to show you these. I'm going to pull this up here. I'm pretty sure TK painted these. These were so freaking sick. Let's see if this pops up here. Yeah, check out these. Check out these right here. Whoop. Y'all see this? I'll blow it up a little bit. It don't distort out. Dude, check out. Now, if I'm wrong, TK, I'm wrong. But those are your baits, correct? Those are some sick freaking bullshads. That guy right there, about the third from the left, is just amazing. I don't know what color he calls that, but I would love to have some 10XDs painted in that. I have not fished Newton Lake, but I heard it's an awesome crankbait lake. Man, I, 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 I love that paint job, man. That's that's nasty. And I'm... That's actually, if you guys don't know, that's the new HD bull shad from Mike Buki. You can tell by the gill plates and the face has more of a new modern look to it versus the old one. Um, I've got some more photos somewhere. I took a bunch of his booth uh, there at the Classic. Dude, I lost some faded chartreuse, man. That's the deal. I got so many windows open on this thing. All right, guys, it is two minutes after midnight. We got oh, we almost got seven hundred people watching. Are you kidding me? It is two minutes after midnight. I don't know how much longer I can go. I like to only stream for about two or three hours. I've got to do a thumbnail, all that stuff. So uh, look up TK on Instagram. Uh, look, make sure you guys go to Ignite Baits. I'm going to wrap this thing up. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, the, the contest for the Ignite Night Baits, I'll draw next Saturday. Leave the comment, your favorite swim bait of all time after the video. Uh, you'll be able to enter on Instagram and Facebook tomorrow. I'm going to give my YouTube guys, y'all get first dibs on it. And, uh, I may do two winners. I may do a little sneaky sneaky for my, uh, YouTube uh, subs, so. Guys, thanks again for joining us Saturday night. Check out Ignite Baits, awesome swim baits. Use the code JANK15. You order from six cents. Use my code BAITMAN, get 10% off. And uh, I'm going to, I got to use the bathroom. I'm not going to lie. The poppers are hitting me. Thank you guys so much for joining. The guys that donated, appreciate it. Um, I'll be back next, we may do Friday, Saturday night again.